Agent Productions presents White Devil Podcast. And welcome back to White Devil Podcast. Uh, This is the podcast uh, where we will discuss... The perils of video making with my guests and my co-host. Let's me let's introduce them. Starting with my co-host, it's Retro Kaiser. Yo, what up, my fellow listeners? <laughs> listeners, that's good. Okay. Uh, I nearly uh, accidentally first... said the N word there. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> that's <laughs> okay. Then. Sorry, that's not cool. But all right, then. Uh, all right. I blame the rap music. <laughs> Okay. Uh, my second, my first guest, and also the standing co-host of the White Devil Podcast, it's the gaming beast, Derupka. Hey, what's up, fellow beastians? And joining us for the nth time, I have to check it. He's been here before, and he'll probably be here again sometime again. Better known for for our Aqualung game reviews, here's the Aqualung himself, Ken. Greetings and salutations. Uh, I'm not going to add anything to it so I don't accidentally blur out any slurs. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yep. Nice, nice. Okay, so it's been a while. This is the second podcast of 2016. Uh, the previous one was the uh, Mr. Weenie Catches Up cast, uh, where we talked about our, our third podcast about Mega Man, actually. And it's uh, interesting. Yes, we. Um, these are interesting times because uh, uh, Kaiser and uh, Aqualung, of course, were on the very first podcast ever. That was long before Kaiser became the official co host. And we also have Dorovka here, not only just a standing co-host, but also the only solo guest in the history of this podcast. And I crunched the numbers. Oh, I didn't even know that. Yeah, yeah, it was was the He-Man. It was the He-Man one, yeah. Yeah, Oh, yeah, sweet. (laughs) I I, I enjoy doing that. Yeah, and uh, it's... it's, Good episode. uh, Yeah, and it's... uh, uh, Well, now I completely lost my... Oh, yes, I crunched the numbers a couple of days ago, and it's funny enough, like, Kaiser and Doravka, you are still, even with that one solo appearance, you are completely tied as for appearances on this podcast, which I guess is not a surprise, because since you've become, since you became the co-host, you've been on pretty much, uh, you know, at least alternately, if not on every single one since that happened. <laughs> yeah. And the tie continues. The tie continues. Well, this podcast. Yeah. Well, Doravka, what we're going to have to do now is we're going to have to tape our hands together. And knife fight, like in Michael Jackson music videos. <laughs> I, I like that. But we have to have, like, 80s outfits, too, so... <laughs> oh, yeah. Or you could do, like, the weird I'll eat it version and strap a chicken. <laughs> d- 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 eat Ooh, it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that, d- 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 like, Weird Al is a fucking genius, and that was, was still one of the best parodies. Oh, yeah. I've, I've watched a lot of Weird Al just recently. I don't know why. I just have been in a weird mood about for, for Weird Al, and I've... We just, uh, over this weekend, right, I actually showed, him, showed my, my little brother the Eat It music video. You know, that's, like you, funny. I was, yeah. that's funny. I was watching one of your Let's Plays um, early on, and I and because of that, I had to um, put on my Best of Weird Al CD and listen to Bedrock Anthem. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That was... Yeah, and we just <clears> recently... We just talked about that on the Star Wars uh, Jedi Outcast. And that's interesting, too. I've also done... Coincidentally, I've also done Let's Plays with all three of you. Uh, Ken... Yeah. Ken, of course, uh, I've only done the one, which is the Mega Man, the the first Mega Man. We did that that one together. But we've, of course, uh, right. we've co- cooperated a lot on cartoons uh, together for his uh, website. And Ken, of course, if for there's whatever a, there's reason, a let's play, not, uh, yeah. in the future still to uh, happen. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I, I always enjoy, that. even though even though I don't animate that much anymore, I still I always enjoy doing those. And um, but the thing about it, I was about to say, of course, in case people, for whatever reason, have not heard of Aqualung Game Reviews, of course, what Ken does is he does these videos where he uh, reviews classic retro games and then plays all the way through them. Uh, with Kaiser, we've done several things together. Let's Plays on my channel, Let's Plays on his channel, and if, if for some reason have, you still have not checked out our most recent Sonic Adventure 2 Let's Plays, I recommend checking those out. And he's also come up with a bunch of really cool review videos just recently as well. Yep, and, just released my third one the other day, and the fourth one's in the work. Yeah, yeah, and the, I've really enjoyed those, and it does. It, it seems you're getting like better and better with each one, so that's that's you know that's a good mm. thing. And Dorothea, it's like learning to re- yep. 
I was going to say so, but might as well save it for the meat of the um, podcast. Oh yeah, we'll talk about that. Well, yeah, because the topic of this, I'm not, I'm not sure if I mentioned before. Did, did I mention it already that the topic of today is the perils of video making? So we'll yes. be talking about. Yes, you mentioned it. Okay, yeah, good. I can't remember the death of me. And getting through the introductions, for, uh, of course, we with Dorovka, we've done a lot of let's plays. Dorovka also does retro game reviews occasionally. He also does uh, role playing streams on his YouTube channel. Uh, yeah, yeah. Which I've been a part uh, of. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I've been I've been uh, kind of on a break uh, for different reasons, uh, but I'm gonna get back into the swing of things. I definitely want to do more reviews. Um, also, yeah, that's, we that's got interesting a, a that list. you haven't done more because you do really good ones too. So I, the, all, all the ones that you've oh, done, thanks, I've, thanks, I've enjoyed. Man. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Well, and, it's I, I just needed a break, but I'm definitely gonna come back with a, with a, with it. Um, and uh, yeah, but the RPG stream, streams, those are those are passion projects of mine, and it's more like just I do it for fun. I do it for myself. Yes. Um, because I enjoy them a lot. So yeah. Yeah, and they they are interesting. Uh, if when you can get get into them, I look I I followed one of them for like a half an hour one Friday when I, I just happened to be online at the same time it was going on. So I, I checked out. Oh, cool, out. cool, yeah. I I, 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 I remember and, that. And if you are at all into D and D or uh, tabletop role playing, like I I think you uh, people who are listening to this should probably go check that out. And also Thanks. we have a Let's Play series going on uh, right now as well, which is the the first Broken Sword, the Shadow of the Templars, yeah, which yeah. people should know is my favorite Broken Sword game. So yeah, that's a big deal for me as well to be Let's Playing it. And we did we did the second one first with Kaiser, which is kind of a running theme that we always do. <laughs> if it's a game series with multiple entries, we always do number two first with Kaiser, and then we yeah. backtrack <laughs> to the first one with Dorovka. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um... We, I also still like we we uh, actually quite a while ago, but I kind of just had like burned out on making videos, which is actually probably topical for this uh, thing for this uh, show oh, yeah. for this episode. But yep. it was um, we have I have a thing we me me Kaiser and you we we made a let's play, um, and I'm gonna release it very soon. I just as I said I needed I kind of just burned out. But anyway, that's. Uh, yeah, I'm I'm again better. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah I'm, I'm a little impatient for that too because I think I already posted the episode <laughs> with the broken sword where I actually referenced that, and people are gonna be confused oh, yes. as hell for several weeks from still <laughs> about yeah. what the hell. Wait, we, we, sorry. we all did a let's play. We all uh, did a let's play together. That's not out yet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. As I said, I I just needed a break from from producing videos. So. And if for some reason. Of things, you, and if, if for on. some. And yeah, and if for some reason you want to see all three of us together in one let's play, that's the you can check out the Heroes of Might and Magic 2 <laughs> let's play that we did, which it's interesting too. You alternated there first, and then you were there at the same time, which wasn't necessarily optimal because <laughs> it was kind of distracting from the game. But anyway, uh, yeah. Uh, before we move on to the glorious comeback of the match game, uh, which we will finally be doing in this episode, and I, I know people have probably been waiting for us to bring it back finally. Yay! Uh, anything? Are are you working on anything right now that you want to quickly like promote at the start of the show? Um, yes. Um, other than Retro Kaiser the Game, which I just gave an update just an hour before we actually did this podcast recording. <laughs> okay. Which is, the, the update is, there's going to be two DLC packs. One's going to cost a nickel, the other one's going to cost a dime. <laughs> which for is reals. a bad joke. For, for reals, or is that a joke? <laughs> no, no, it's it's for real. They're gonna be, it's for real. Okay. I just need to figure out what it is, though. But one's going to cost a nickel, <laughs> the other's going to cost a dime. <laughs> At least you're honest about the fact that you're that the DLC is a complete ripoff. You don't even know yeah, what it is yet. <laughs> yeah. Yep, and not to mention I am working on some more reviews, including um, everybody's gone to the Rapture and this arcade like um, airplane shoot 'em up called Wolf Lame. Wolf Lame. Yep. Okay. It sort of plays like... Um, I was just wondering if I, if I misheard you and it was Wolf Lane for real. Yes, it's a bit difficult to pronounce because you can either call it Wolf Lane or Wolf Lame. Okay, then. Because there's no two Fs, it's just a one F after in between Wool and Flame. Oh, 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 okay. Interesting. <laughs> yep. Wow. I was thinking and not to mention, I'm, I am... Actually, I'm working on like... A hundred reviews at once here, which are all coming eventually, but two more I'm working on. Uh, two fighting games based on visual novels, one being Melty Blood and the other one being, I can't pronounce this, this na name, but I'm just going to 
but it's based on a um a visual novel that's based on um, Romance of the Three Kingdoms, except with an all female cast. Ooh, interesting. <laughs> and, are, and do they have chainmail bikinis? I'm guessing. No, but they got pretty big breasts. <laughs> uh, not, yeah. Yeah. That's what I thought. And you did that DLC, which reminds me, you did that DLC review of Dead or Alive 5 last round, or was it final round? Uh, are you going to keep doing those DLC things? Oh, yeah. DLC yeah. Unlocked is... Oh, I forgot to mention, I, the next few episodes of those is going to be one, which is like a, vo- a Russian voiceover for a free-to-play game. <laughs> yes, that's sort of like a joke episode. And two... The the um, DLC add-ons for um, Darius Burst. All right, nice, nice. What about Darupka? Do you have something you're working on right now? Um, oh. yeah, I, I uh, well, right, I, I, as I said, I had, I, I, I had to take a break, and yeah. I had, I was working on different projects, including that Let's Play and uh, the next tournament. So I just decided. I know it's not ideal, but I just, as I said, I needed the break. However, that's going to be the next episode of the uh, Virtual Warriors. The next tournament is going to come out. Oh yeah. And uh, yeah, yeah. And I'm gonna tr- and I'm gonna bring them out in quick succession. And uh, yeah, I do want to do also more reviews because I've been like obsessed with this game, Mountain Blade Warbrand. And uh, like I would, that's a game I definitely want to review because I I've been just enjoying the the hell out of that. So yeah. Yeah, that's that's one of the things, and 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 a couple of other things here and there. Finishing up some let's plays, including bringing out the one that we did, and uh, yeah. So 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 I have stuff in the works uh, because I'm starting I'm starting back up again, and uh, it's actually for some of the reasons, but I won't get into it uh, once we get into the topic. But yeah. All right. That's pretty much it. And then Ken, uh, what what can we expect from Aqualung Game Reviews in the future? Um. Well. <clears throat> uh. Well. Very similar. Uh. Uh, story is that I also had to take a bit of a break like a couple months ago. I got a new job and I was um, it was just a I never we really had the drive to, uh, to to work on anything around that time and just you know maybe I don't know a couple of weeks ago I got back on the horse so um, soon hopefully by this weekend because I'm going on a weekend trip I'll be able to post a uh, a walkthrough for uh, Mega Man on Game Boy. Nice. nice. Yeah, that, I'm looking forward to that. Me too. Really enjoy your reviews, man. I thank you, sir. <laughs> yeah. That's <laughs> that, that's about it. Um, yeah, that's that's it. That that's all that's uh yeah. that's in the works at the moment. Yeah, dare I ask? That's that's, pre- that's pretty cool. That uh, idea because I think a lot of people don't know that the the games when they did versions for Game Boy. They made completely new versions, like the Mega Man Game Boy version is different than... I mean, it has characters from, I think, Mega Man 1 or 2, the first yeah. one. They're kind of like, but it, but it's a different like these game. fused port. They're kind of these fused ports of like two games, always on the mm-hmm. corresponding. Yeah, game. yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's, and it's I, and like have, the Mega Castlevania Man 2. game. Yeah, and I have Mega Man 2, and that's one of my favorites. Uh, 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 I, I wouldn't say it's like in my necessarily my top ten, but I really enjoy it. It's so it's one of my favorites. Uh, but um, in that sense, but uh, dare, dare I ask? Uh, am I? You might have already said this before. Uh, given an answer to this before, but I have completely forgotten whatever became of the infamous Action 52 review project. Uh, well, <laughs> yeah, it kind of dropped off the face of the earth a little bit. There were, um, I had to, uh, I, I, re- I, I, um, I reached out to everybody who said they were, um, well, first off, it, it just went into, into purgatory, uh, the, the, the development hell. And yeah. then, um, and then when I tried, I, I said, "All right, you know what? I'm gonna resurrect this thing." And I reached out to anybody who had dibs on a game, um, and uh, waited, you know, for. And a lot of some people have responded. Some people have, you know, uh, have, you know, are on the fence. And then there are others who I just haven't heard from. So um, once I, you know, once it's, the dust settles on that, and there are definitely, you know reopenings then i'll have to post the videos explaining the whole thing there have probably been a ton more subscribers since then who don't even know what the hell this is and may oh, yeah. want to get on board so uh, sadly yeah, I'll, sadly I'll i to... am sadly i am one of those subscribers i have no idea what this project is <laughs> yeah, yeah it was it was, is, it, this is been, years ago it's yeah <laughs> i mean this has, this has been going for a long time now aqualung was going to do a review of action 52 for the nes where the fans were going to send in voice clips of uh their short reviews for each game 
and I was oh, also sweet. and I was part of this project. And I remember I recorded my voice clip back in 2012 when I was in Glasgow. So that gives you some idea of what this project wow. is going on. Yeah, this is like then, then, then a then Disney a few, album. I think I might have to join that project too because I've been because funny enough I have been playing Action 52 recently. I, I have well, uh, when I was like, a, ex- like 20 to 25 uh, games that were not uh, that were not uh, that, that are not taken. It looks like so when I get the time, and that's the other thing too is uh, with, with this new position, I don't have as much downtime where I actually used to be able to uh, uh, you know take a seat, uh, set aside some time to actually uh, work on. Uh, you know, some side projects like my videos and whatnot, but now I can't do that anymore. So, uh, you know, I, I got to find uh, time for, for for things like that. And I don't I don't want Action 52 to get in the way of, you know, whatever I'm mainly working on. So it's yeah, yeah. that's another reason why it's dragged ass as much as it has. All right. Okay. Uh, and to say quickly about myself before we move on uh, to the match game is that I have a new... Well, it's already come out by the time this will come out. I have a new list video, sort of, sort to say, but it's not really a top ten. It's just ten obsolete hardware and software from personal computing. I'm going to be talking about all kinds of stuff about uh, personal computer usage that have kind of disappeared over the years and things like that. So one of my personal favorites, of course, like I'm going to be talking that. about floppy disks. And uh, <laughs> for the video, I dug out... So it's going to be me in, on, on camera talking about it, but it, I had to dig out an old floppy disk somewhere. Uh, it's actually the Windows 98 installation floppy that I found, <laughs> just randomly something to oh, have man. in the video to show a floppy disk, and now That's I can't... Good. And th- this, is, great... this, is, this is what a fucking nerd I am. The minute I dug it out, like, now I can't stop playing with it. It's just, like, with me everywhere now. <laughs> I, was about, I was about to say, that's a great floppy disk to show up in a video. That's, like, a very appropriate one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's that's a good idea. I like that. Yeah. So like, if, if any of you, I, I, I re- any, anybody wants to watch that video and feel really fucking old, you know, it'll be great for that. <laughs> And of course, I'll be coming back to the He-Man and She-Ra reviews. I actually want to do a couple of He-Man reviews in the. I've been doing the She-Ra reviews just recently because I wanted to get the ball rolling on that. But I'm I'm gonna go bring it back to He-Man for a couple of videos because there's because there was that one episode in the Cobra Khan uh, review uh, group that I kind of left out intentionally because I wanted to focus on it for an entire review video and. Another one that I that I, that's kind of been in the making for a long while, so those are going to be coming out pretty soon. But now I think we're done with the introduction, so when we come back, it's time for another round of White Devil Match Game. <laughs> and welcome back to White Devil Match Game. Uh, the match game where you will be presented with a puzzle, as we call them here. Each puzzle has a blank. The panel, which consists of the other contestants and myself, will fill in that blank during uh, when we will play the match game theme song as well. Uh, and then people will try to come up with an answer that will match the most amount of people, and who matches the most amount of people will win. The grand prize, which today is my last week's laundry. <laughs> That's the glorious prize today. <laughs> Dirty or clean? Uh, I checked. I think it's clean. <laughs> All right, you so think? Not, uh, it's we don't need to wash it. it. That was completely coincidental. Excuse me, Hanu, but that thing on the top of the laundry pile, is is that a red G-string with your name written out in gems? <laughs> <laughs> and with that, uh, we will move on to the first puzzle of this match game. Oh, but before we move on, uh, maybe a little word. Uh, recently, on the White Devil official page, I made the 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 the, uh, the Hall of Champions, or uh, what was what did I call it? I don't even remember anymore. The 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 table of champions, I think it was. Yes. And if you go to the table of no, the board of champions. Okay, there it is. If you go to the board of champions, you will see that we have uh, two champions amongst us: Retro Kaiser and Dorobka. And Dorobka is the reigning champion with two victories. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, brother, I'm the champion. The Rock is the Shao Kahn of the Mortal Kombat. <laughs> yeah. So, and Kaiser has won once and been a runner-up uh, once. And interestingly, both of you have gotten a single Rodden Answer Award before. So, uh, in other words, 
if Kaiser wins today's match game, uh, he will be uh, he will be tied in the board of champions. Uh, another tie. Another <laughs> tie. Yes, it will be another friggin' tie. On the con- on the other hand, if uh, if if uh, Ken wins today, uh, it'll be he-, he will be inducted to the board of champions officially. So he's he has he's, uh, competed several times. Uh, to look back quickly on your uh, Ken's gaming history. Uh, now I can't friggin' find it, of course. Uh, where where do we have? Okay, uh, Ken's history doesn't look very uh, promising. He's been last once, uh, but it was a shared last place uh, with Sendu on White De- White Devil Podcast number eight. Uh, I got that going for him. Yeah, so that's nice. <laughs> and and that's it. Actually, you've only been <laughs> you've only been in match game once. <laughs> wow. Okay then. And not only that, you also got. Oh yeah, this was the infamous second time, the the the, the second uh, match game, which was a kind of a a little bit of a shit fest, honestly, because I was completely out of it. <laughs> it was all my fault. I'm, so I'm I guess the, I'm taking so the if, you're, if, 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 if there's going to be a hall of shame, then I'll uh, gladly be inducted into that. Uh, that would actually be interesting. Uh, the other Hall of Shame entries, how that would include... There's a lot of people, because there's a lot of shared last places. Kaiser's been uh, on a shared last place in the very first one with Sendu. And uh, uh, Lindsay the Red was uh, got inducted into the last place, not only with no matches, but with a Rotten Answer Award as well. So, yeah, that's a definitely... In, in, uh, and Amuya dropped off uh, in the... White Devil Podcast number 12 into the f- last place. Joe has been last, and... Oh! And then, of course, Kaiser's won and only win. I should, I, I was going to mention this. Uh, so Kaiser has only ever won the White Devil uh, match game once, and it was by the slimmest of all margins, a single soft match in a game between uh, him, Alex Swingle, and Dorobka. And it was the match game where, in Alex's turn, everybody in the panel gave the exact same answer. But the, the the bad thing is Alex's answer was not didn't match any of those, so he had so he had the victory in his hand and it slipped and Kaiser collected the victory. So Alex and Dorovka have uh, a shared last place from that pot from that one. And our, the tie. Yes, and our most recent uh, Hall of Shame inductee would be T McBee, who was last in White Devil Podcast 17. Okay, but enough statistics. Let's get to the actual game, Kaiser. You have the choice of A and B. Which puzzle will you pick? Um, B. B. I had a good long think about that one. Yeah, you did. I was wondering if you were ever going to answer. All right, B. Panelists, get ready to write. Do After... I have to send my answer? Yeah. Sorry, do I have to send my answer to you too? <laughs> no. When you are the contestant, you do not need to write the answer. You get to say it after everybody else has written theirs. <laughs> did you do that on purpose? No, yeah. I, I really did. <laughs> we were about just that. talking about how every single time in the past, Rubgus always forgotten that you don't have to write the answer. Yep. yep. <laughs> and now that it's Kaiser's turn, he chokes under the pressure and does the same thing. Yeah. I guess that's what you, you call you, karma. You All right, panelists. It's quarter of one over there. Give him a break. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, it is. It's very, very late. Okay, panelists, get ready to write. After blowing up Metal yeah. Gear, Solid Snake decided to enjoy his holiday by blank. So, all right. All right. After blowing up Metal Gear, Solid Snake decided to enjoy his holiday by blank. So, how do you think Solid Snake would enjoy his holiday? What, what we want uh, here? All right. I was actually hoping kind of that Ken was going to get this because he, of course, is a very big Metal Gear fan. All right. We're still waiting for Ken's answer. And the panelists have written in. Kaiser, uh, after blowing up Metal Gear, Solid Snake decided to enjoy his holiday by blank. How would you fill in that blank? Cartwheeling naked in a field of flowers. <laughs> 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 uh, <Yep>. Okay. <clears throat> in a, uh, that's a long-ass answer. <laughs> I don't know if you're going to match anybody with that. All right, then. Ken, what did you say? I was going to uh, say something about caribou, but I ended up just going with snowmobiling. Snowmobiling! No, not a match for cartwheeling. <laughs> <laughs> it kind of rhymes, though, a little bit. Yeah, it kind of rhymes, but 
no, not a match. Not even. Oh, no, no. Dealing, dealing, yeah. Oh, no. Um, yeah, Snake would totally have the balls to um, go cartwheeling naked in the snow. Yeah. Quite literally. Oh, my God. Not the flowers, though. <laughs> Yorabka, I don't suppose you have a cartwheel in your answer. No. Um, yeah, I, I wrote smoking weed. Smoking because, weed? Because, you know. I'm not actually very knowledgeable <laughs> about uh, uh, Solid Snake or Metal Gear, but... I'm going to let I, it slide. I, I'm know, going to let you slide off what? a run, run an answer award, because my answer, too, was smoking. Just smoking, not... Oh, well, so that's... Well, well, that's that's the thing, is that one thing that is very iconic about him is smoking, even in the very yes. first game of yes. the NES, so... Yes, uh, that would almost well. that, that would have almost almost seemed like... Oh boy, I feel like I should give Kaiser a run answer for his freaking answer as the contestant. But I don't have the authority to do that because screwing yourself over is not against the rules. So, no. <laughs> sorry, Kaiser. Come on, guys. After that, the that... first round, you have no matches. <laughs> uh, come on, guys. I would have thought you'd come up with someone a bit more bizarre than your own answers. Uh, yeah, but... Well... <laughs> <laughs> well, I do not even know what to make of that answer, but you deserve to be inducted to the Hall of Shame for a second time, Kaiser, for an absolutely <laughs> terrible answer. <laughs> well, there should be you, Hall of Kaiser, Shame answers. Kaiser, Kaiser, right you, you can cartwheel naked into that Hall of Shame. So, <laughs> go ahead. Ugh, please do not. I don't want to see the animated yep. version of this episode, that's for sure. <laughs> Oh my There's probably God. something on DeviantArt with Snake Cartwheel and Naked. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm, sh I'm sure. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> well, <clears throat> that was an interesting start. I don't think we've ever had such a terrible answer on the first round from a contestant. <clears throat> okay. I'm back and see if I can beat that. Yes, let's see how if you can beat that because it's Ken's turn to go next. All right. Ken, you have the choice of A and B. A is the puzzle that Retro Kaiser did not pick. Which one do you want? A. A. You want the A. Ah. All right. Let's see what he passed on. Yes. Let's see what 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 he passed on. All right, panelists. Pants on. Get ready to write. Mario is angry. Yoshi was. <laughs> <laughs> um, <clears throat> Excuse me. Kaiser had written a fair bit of these puzzles. He's clearly written this one as well. That's why I cracked up because once I read and once I continue reading, you will see why. Mario is angry. Yoshi was pissing on his rug again, and so Mario went up to Yoshi and blanked him. <laughs> okay, I don't even. <laughs> that was because I saw the Big Lebowski um, the night that I wrote that. All right. Well, that was fast. Everybody wrote. Everybody finished writing really quickly. All right. Okay. <clears throat> Ken. <clears throat> uh, Mario is angry. Yoshi was pissing on his rug again. And so Mario went up to Yoshi and blanked him. How would you fill in that blank, Ken? <laughs> <laughs> well, well. <laughs> uh, pissed on him. <laughs> pissed on him. <laughs> oh, so the blank would be pissed on. <laughs> That's like a really horrible fanfic. You know. That explains the yellow Yoshi. <laughs> <laughs> well, what about the brown Yoshi? Oh, boy. Oh, man. He, here we go. <laughs> here we go. Kaiser, how did you answer? <laughs> well, I just put... My answer was a very logical one. He rubbed his nose in it. Rub I rubbed <laughs> Yoshi, Yoshi's nose in it. Now that I think that should be uh, a half answer because yeah, he did uh, make answer. have him make contact with the piss. It yeah. wasn't his oh. own, but you know. I agree. That's it's a soft on him. Hmm. Oh boy. He I did. To, it's just it, that... If this is the this is the kind of answers people are giving today, I'm gonna be merciful and give it a soft match. <laughs> I mean, he's technically not pissing on him, but there is urine on the Yoshi involved. I don't even want to go. I don't even want to justify this anymore. Soft match. Soft match. Okay. Ur urine is involved. Urine is involved. Okay. Dorabka, how did you answer? I wrote punched him. Punch him? <laughs> Not a match for pissing. Yeah. And my answer was spanked. So, <laughs> as a disciplinary measure. No, nothing kicked. Wait, we got pissing and spanking. What the hell's wrong with us? 
<laughs> no, I think mine is a corporal punishment. So mine actually makes sense, and I think Doropka's would have made sense if if Ken <laughs> if Ken had answered if you had answered uh, uh, spanked hit something in that neighborhood, I would have given that a soft match. But you got a soft match anyway, out of it, so I guess because you know, like Mario smashing, but uh, <laughs> yeah, you know, I just went the. With the next best thing, I think. Oh my God! This match game. This one's the record books, though. Yeah. This is a mismatch game, is what this yeah. is. <laughs> Blankety blank indeed. Uh, okay. Yep. Pissing on Yoshi while cartwheeling naked and a field full of flowers. All right. So, after <clears throat> after two rounds, uh, the score is such that <clears throat> that uh. Ken is leading by a single soft match. Garopka needs at least <clears throat> one full match or two soft matches to beat Ken for this match game victory and become the third time champion of match game, or otherwise Ken will become, or, or else this will be Ken's very first win on the match game. So, let's see. Uh, so, Garopka, you have the choices of puzzles A and B. B is the one Ken didn't choose. Which one do you want? I'll choose B. B. He chose B. Panelists, get ready to write. All right. This is a pretty long one. Uh, I don't remember. No, no, no. I think this is another Retro Kaiser original. Oh, dear. <laughs> okay. All right. Panelists, get ready to write. <clears throat> the three blind mice were out on the town again. One of the mice heard a rumbling sound and got worried. Seconds later, they died because the blank crushed them to death. They didn't see that coming. <laughs> <laughs> yep, that's a Retro Kaiser puzzle if there ever was one. Okay, did everybody catch that? Do I need to read it again? Everybody got I that? I think we got it. All right, good. Good. Uh, can, can, could, could you repeat it again? Because, like, I, I, I did get it just, just a one more time. Oh, you're, you're, you're the consi- okay, uh, three blind mice were out yeah, yeah. again. Well, I, I haven't written my answer yet, so I'll read it after I've answered something, because... Uh, yeah. Ugh. So, uh, we're still waiting for Ken's answer. Oh, I thought you were going to repeat it one more time. Oh, okay, I'll repeat it. The three blind mice were out on the town again. One of the mice heard a rumbling sound and got worried. Seconds later, they died because the blank crushed them to death. They didn't see that coming. Okay. Yes, so we're still waiting for Ken's answer. Then Garupka will have to get to answer the puzzle. Mm-hmm. All right, panelists have given their answer. Okay, Draka. Uh, the three blind mice. Yes. What crushed the three blind mice? What's your answer for that blank? Um, the car. The car. All right. Well, they're out in the town, so. Yes. Yes. Oh. That actually makes makes perfect sense. Uh, okay. He said car. Kaiser, what did you answer? The Ravka wins. I said a car. A car. So that's a full nice. match. Yes. And what did Kenny? What Ken? What did you say? I said the frightened elephant. The frightened elephant. I think that was a... Yes, that's a very good answer because my answer was also elephant. My answer was also elephant. So uh, that's two misses. With one single single exact match, Jarupka wins the match game for the third time. Congratulations. Yeah, brother. A running championship match game. All right. And with that, uh, we will be... uh, we will be, uh, <laughs> what am I trying to say? Yes, I'll be sending the, my last week's laundry to you pretty soonish. <laughs> Congratulations <laughs> for that. And that's the match game. Thank you very much. And once we come back, we'll, we'll, we will have more White Devil. See you then. <laughs> and welcome back to White Devil Podcast. Uh, the perils of video making... So today, uh, what we wanted to talk about is uh, all the things that go into making review videos and maybe just video making in general, because as we've mentioned before, we uh, we all do at least review videos of some sort, but we also do other types of videos as well. We've done, well, we, um, me and Ken, we've worked on the cartoons before. There's the those kinds of streaming things and uh, whatnot. But I think that we should, maybe maybe the game review video would be the best one to kind of start with because that's what we all have in common. So uh, yeah. who, who would like to go first? Why, talk, maybe say something about the process of making it. Nobody. It's, it's hard and it's annoying. 
It's <laughs> it's like in general video making one of the biggest problems I see is with just that technical issues pop up. Like you have a vision and uh like you get always like like you, you stumble over these technical problems and then and then a lot of the time, at least me, I'm I'm not all the time but like I, I I need to figure the technical problems out, especially when I'm I'm trying to capture footage for for certain games. Um, yeah, yeah, that yep. would be one of the uh, issues I got. Yeah, more, for me, for me, it's always been PC games, and I think the but one of the part of the problem is, of course, that I play that it's a lot of like old games that I uh, yeah. that I that I uh, make reviews out of. Uh, I mean, if it's well, Ken, Ken of course, uh, you use emulators. From time to time, that's a pretty useful tool. I mean, it hel- helps a lot. Yes, but I mean, you, it still isn't without its problems as far as capturing goes. I mean, sometimes, you know, I'll what I I'll, I'll do, um, you know, I'll try to I'll I'll try to capture a, a level or a segment at a time, and I mean, every once in a while, for reasons that aren't ever really figured out, is uh, you know, like it'll just it won't capture, and I'll have to start all over again where I was. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That, that's, uh, it, it, hurdles like that really suck. Uh, Especially yeah, if you go capture for a long period of time, and it, it that's enough to say, all right, I'm putting this down for now because I'm not gonna do that again. Oh yeah, capturing games can be a bit sometimes, especially like when you've got this one certain game that doesn't want to work with, you know, any of your recorders, free or you paid good money for. A good example of that was back in 1995. That game just did not want to record, which made the review very tough to edit because I had because I did not have much you know usable footage so the review overall ended up looking a bit janky if so yeah because the game just would not capture it properly which is yeah like I said it's frustrating so you have to you know try to salvage it yourself and there's there's there were some points in that review where I just wanted to go fuck it I'm not doing it but <sighs> I did it yeah well, we, we go, go a little bit like uh, to the start of the uh, of making a review, I think with most of us, I think the thing, the first thing to do is, of course, there's the script, writing the script. And do you guys find that like how h- how difficult or easy do you find that personally? Uh, like I I have problems because for me, like like I have experimented with just doing it kind of off the cuff, and I have written like early on, I would write the scripts, and one of the problems was that um like not really the script itself because you write something down. Well, actually the script itself, but it comes later on because you write down the script, but then when you actually read it, it, it might not sound as good or, or like, like because the biggest problems uh, is that uh, you are like, for example, sounding that you're actually reading off the script mm. because uh, like I, I always try to do it like as naturally as possible, but when I'm just reading off the script, I'm not like really an actor at all. So, um, like I, I I could I could that's the thing is you gotta really learn how to like uh, like perform something you know for a video yeah. you know and I, I I've been getting better at it but it's still like uh, it can be annoying because often when I would write the script I would write the script right and then um, like I I would cross out a bunch of things like the the Franco the Crazy Revenge I had this whole part in it where I would talk about uh, like the a little bit. I went like really deep into the to, to, into the matter where I would talk about how like what the game in a way represents. You know that it was kind of a parody of like the thing. The reason why I found it also really cool and lousy is because uh, like I, it's something that I could connect with because like the post-communist Hungary and, and Poland was pretty much the same in many ways because it was like kind of like a like there was. It, it was kind of like a not a waste lead, but it was just there was just a lot of things that were missing and a lot of these old cars and just uh you know crime and everything so it's i don't know like it's it's uh yeah i i i found um i had this whole thing written down, but then I just said no, I'm just gonna cross it out because I think most people will get it, and it was the biggest problem is also you write down a lot of things that you might think are cool but um, like you, you don't want the, the the review to take forever because no, you don't. it's it's there's so many people where where one of the biggest complaints I had always is like oh the maybe the review is too long 
or one thing that a lot of people, well, not a lot, but some people complained about that, um, about my intro being too long. And it's like, what is, what, what intro is too long? What is too short? And when, when do you stop making your video? When do you start uh, just pandering to, to uh, your viewers? You know, how, how many viewers you have, even if you just thought like, like three or four viewers or a million, when, when do you start, you know, to just pander? Because that's the thing is that, I've seen a lot of big YouTubers. They just always jump on the latest bandwagon and just to try to keep their attention thing going. And really, I don't have a lot of subscribers, but I do enjoy, uh, like, I, I do enjoy the, what I enjoy most is the uh, back and forth. So, and I, I have made now a shorter intro. And I know the intro might not be a big deal, but for me, I always like constructing the, the intro as, as, a, as a thing, as a, you know, it's just, I, I love, I actually do love video editing and I love the process of making these cool things. But the thing about a review, there's a lot of people, where, why didn't you get to the review like right away? Because I don't have any patience. I'm like, so it's, it's kind of like, I, I, I have made, I started so many projects where I just kind of like, oh, the footage sucks or this sucks. And I, and I just kind of abandoned it. Like, I, I actually try to make a project where I want to still do that, where I talk about, I show, a, a, like, for example, my video game RPG characters, like my character for Skyrim, because, like, Death Adder 83, a friend of mine did that. And, uh, like, I wanted to do something like that, too. And I started doing it, but it, oh, I would always ramble, which is kind of ironic because I'm rambling right now. But, <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> like, we kind of, like, like, uh, uh, yeah, you kind of, you kind of yeah, ran, gonna... ran us through the whole making process, kind of. I was, I was still kind of wanted to ask sorry, about sorry. The making yeah. process yeah. because, yeah, um, yeah okay. The, yeah, well, well, because I wanted to yeah. kind of jump on what you said that the difficult part about, like, when you write is, uh, <clears throat> how, do you, how do you write it? Because I have a, I have a way. Where I kind of alternate from writing between like how I actually speak and then just kind of writing for the sake of uh, making it interesting to read. And it's kind of it's difficult because it might sometimes sound like, man, I don't really talk like this. Like this is this is kind of crazy. And it's also uh, what you said. Like you have to do voiceovers many times. You have to. I mean, it's something that you eventually learn. I think that you learn to write in a way that's comfortable for you to read uh, in a way. Mm. And it's also I, I I run into that trap a whole lot of times uh, where where I write something that looks awesome that looks great in a page it's 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 a great sentence and then I can't read it out loud like there's too many difficult sounds that kind of just completely trip me up or whatever so yeah that's another thing that you gotta have to learn to get out of oh yeah I've I've been there before especially with some of my more unreleased earlier works that I'm not gonna bother released. Because what I used to do is, um, because I'm used to, you know, making written reviews, because I did that a whole lot over the years. So I thought, ah, oh, I'm making video reviews should be easy. All I need to do is read my written review as, and the thing, oh, no, it doesn't work like that. They're two completely different kinds of reading. And not to mention, um, sometimes when you're reading for a script, I'm, I'm just like, this sounds fucking stupid. Scratch it. I was like, blah, 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 blah. And it's, <laughs> And stuff like that. <sighs> uh, yeah, and the guy, guy I really want to hear from is Ken, because you basically narrate the whole game, or basically what you do to get through the whole game in a lot of times. Right, yeah. I, I try to write, like, um, ba well, kind of like what you were saying about the kind of a mix of of, so, of, of something you like to read or uh, and hear. It's, it's kind of like uh, I subconsciously write something that sounds good to read out loud or yeah. read it or, or read it as as if you're hearing somebody uh, reciting it um, but I don't like to proofread anymore um, because I think that it, it has a tendency I have a tendency to overthink and over edit and it doesn't sound come out as natural if I really uh, just kind of uh, keep everything the way it was and it it'll, it'll just seem too stagnant and and slick. What I do though is, if something does get a little little long winded, um, you know, as mentioned earlier, that will kind of make the thing seem kind of bloated. I'll just edit the sound clip because what I do is I keep all the mistakes. Uh, you know, if I if I fuck up, I'll just go back and and redo oh, yeah. a line or mm -hmm. a sentence or and then I'll just you know I'll 
after I record I the audio, I go back and clean up all those mistakes. And if something in there does seem a little bit uh, too, uh, you know, a little bit too much, I'll just edit out that whole segment at then. Because when you listen back to it, then you kind of get a feel for how the th- the whole video is going to flow, and yeah. it, it, which is different from reading it because it's a different pace. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. Um, another thing that I've um. For, had trouble with, uh, you know, coming up with reviews is, like, I don't want to sound like I'm, um, you know, not, you know, like, adding too much in there, like, making it fillerous. What I like to do is I like to tend to make, like, a more blunt approach to that. But even then, when you're actually taking a more blunt approach to review, you have the nerve of, like, sounding quite repetitive. Because I remember, like, that with my back in 1995 review, you, you sort of complained that my script was a bit repetitive. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you, you do find those problems. You you sort of have to you know try to balance it out. Um, yeah. So yeah, I like to sound blunt, but I wouldn't mind adding a little bit of flamboyance in there. <laughs> I think one what, what, one thing is that um, how much do you want? Because I think you got to also decide on a style. Because you can be like, do you want to be a performer, like an entertainer, kind of like John Tron, or do you want to be more? Like, uh, like I'm giving the facts, you know, and and I'm like, I'm still, still like, you know, making it in- interesting, but it's mostly like I'm actually reviewing the game. Yeah. I'm, that's I'm, am I, you know, like that's the question. I'm, am I making a show or am I actually reviewing or some, somewhere in between? Yeah. It's, yeah. It's, that's, a, that's a hard, that's a hard one, and that's all the thing I want. I, I always kind of struggle with too. Is like I don't I don't want to do a review like I'm doing a character voice or something. It's 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 I do kind of want it to sound genuine. The problem is that uh, if I'm just reading it off, and I used to this kind of goes back to when I was doing cartoons. The very earliest ones that I used to do, I didn't even have a script. I just ad libbed everything. So uh, I and I when I, the first few times I tried to do a script, I hated it and I didn't want to do it for a while so i kept continued that living but eventually i learned how to do it well that it sounded but it's um and the problem is like if i do it with kind of an attitude uh there's always kind of that risk and i i, I still run into this with a few of my reviews where i kind of do it with a little bit too much sass and it sounds like i don't really like the thing i'm reviewing and then it's like no, no, no. That's not what I wanted to say. And that's, then, then it becomes like a balancing issue. Like, do I want to talk about the negative stuff first, and then end on the positives? Because that that way you kind of leave the also the uh, the person watching the video kind of feeling like, oh, yeah, there's a lot of great things in this. Game. Oh yeah, that's another thing about reviews is trying to keep your information consistent. You don't want to sound like that you're going all over the place, as well. Because I, because I know I try to keep it like to the core factors. First, I talk about the, the story, the gameplay, then the graphic, then the graphics and sound, and then bonus stuff. Like keep it at like that core sort of elements. And another thing that I've learned about reviewing is you don't kick up the review with just the information of the game. Because I've learned that the hard way. Because when I listen back to it and listen to other people do it. Your brain's not prepared to accept any information, so it just goes by. It's like, huh? Well, what was that? So you gotta have like that little. You gotta find that way to ease into the information instead of like having it hit you like a truck. Yeah, yeah. It's an interesting uh, point. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, there's something where uh, Critical Failure had a good name for that. Like he said, there's a lot of reviews that start with the wiki intro, where they just give the the basic facts, like who developed it who released it and when it was released and kind of what's the genre and stuff. And I kind of am trying to move away from that, you know, because I think the thing about reviews is that pretty much almost every game ever has been reviewed and not just game, but pretty much like we're getting to a point where eventually everything is going to be reviewed. And what is more important is what is your connection to the media that you are reviewing or the thing that you are reviewing in a way. And then what's your opinion? Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, that's one one thing. Uh, then uh, one thing uh, I have a list of things that I wanted to talk about. Can we move a, move a little bit way, or d- does somebody still have something to say about the script writing process in general? I, I think in general I like uh, writing it more than performing, but I'm I'm getting more comfortable with it. I think it's just doing it more 
Practice makes perfect. Yeah. Well, I, actually, I just remembered the thing that I, I, I wanted to say, but I kind of forgot while you guys were talking. Is that there's, there's always like I have that problem a little bit where I always want to want it to be kind of balanced where I do talk about like what Kaiser said, the thing about the plot and then maybe the graphics and music and things. But there's a lot of times I do kind of review something and I kind of just there's only just there's really just just, just that one thing I want to talk about or maybe two things I want to talk about and then it comes to like. Uh, you know, maybe should I say something about the graphics or uh, graphics or music? And it's like I, I don't really care <laughs> right now. <laughs> well, usually I have something to say about the music. The music is something that I usually yeah. The, there are definitely <laughs> you know key points you have to get put in there somewhere. But you you know it's like you you also want the uh, sen- you you want the transitions to make sense. You don't want to just be like the graphics are good, the controls are shit, the music is fantastic. And yeah. you know you don't want it to be, you know just have this uh, yeah exactly you kind of want to daisy chain it so that the it it, it, it flows like uh, like a conversation and that's a, that's a problem yes. I, this this is not this is now going a little bit out of out of the realm of game reviews but I also have that problem a little bit with my Eman and Shira reviews where I'm always I'm always obsessing about the fact that the videos may be a little short but it's like I, I I'm trying to get over that it's like you said what you have to say so you know you don't have to like try to make it longer than it needs to be <laughs> yeah good question um how long do you do you have like a set time to make the length of your reviews in particular well mine is my, well mine is just based on when the how long the game is until the game is over but I but if if it, if it does uh, I I. I do have this unnatural tendency to, uh, or a na- or, or natural tendency to, um, if, if it's a shorter game, I'll I'll stretch it out a little bit more and and, tr- and include more of the game, and uh, like if it's only a five level game and the levels aren't that long, then I'll kind of go over almost everything in in each uh, in each stage, as opposed to if it's like a uh, a colossal game, then I have a tendency then to, uh, you know, skip some uh, some of the more obvious and uh, you know self-explanatory parts, just so that way it's not too uh, redundant. Yeah, I mean, I, I always feel I always feel with my videos if it's like three minutes in that neighborhood that I, like it feels like kind of puny, but then again. Yeah, like like I said, you know, it depends a lot. Like if I have a lot to say about it, like I used to, I used to try to shoot for that ten minutes roughly, because I, I kind of yeah. like that. I like I kind of like that as a video length. But then I start, start to realize you can't, you don't have stuff to say for to to, to talk about for ten minutes. Like you know, forget about it. <laughs> yeah, the, yeah. The, the, yeah the, 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 my my because uh, you know I either have reviews or reviews and a full walkthrough. The reviews I always try to keep like you know four to six minutes that portion of it and then the walkthrough is just you know it's it, it's just depends on the length of the game and at that point if you don't even like how long the, the walkthrough is then you're not you know it's a walkthrough you know what you're getting yourself into so you can just exit out at that point yeah um, i like I, I i would uh i would do i would also shoot for the under 10 minutes thing uh sometimes it would be longer sometimes nowadays it's like if it's a short game like uh, i did the uh arcade game the night slashers and it's a fuck, it's a beat 'em up. So, um, like, there's only so much you can talk about. So I was like, I, I, I tried to keep it short and sweet. Uh, however, like Baldur's Gate or something, it's gonna be longer because um, because the RPG is usually more involved. Uh, because yeah. I want to talk about the system and and uh, like like the uh, combat and and also a little bit of the story. That's the thing, though. I don't want to. Like one thing I don't like about these, uh, like Tig with Tig, like that guy with the glasses style reviews, or like Spoonie style reviews, where it's almost more like a riff, where they like go, if it's a movie or a video game, they go scene by scene and they spoil everything. Uh, so really, the only way I watch it, if it's like something, if it's something I don't care about, then yeah, I'll, I'll watch it. But if it's something that I'm interested in watching, then I, I play it or watch it first, and then because I try not to spoil. Uh, like the main storyline and everything, like uh, like uh, with Baldur's Gate, uh, there's some big things, and I didn't want to spoil that, even though I have completely played through the game. So. Oh yeah, I understand. I understand that completely. And I've actually been um, considering myself like 
if I had to spoil some because I wanted to, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna put it directly in the video. I'm gonna like pull like what sort of Aqualung does with his game guide things. I'm gonna put it like to towards the end, but with like a like a warning thing, like end the video. Like if you want to know what it is, it'll be at the end of the video, and if you don't want to know what it is, it'll be at the end of the video, so you don't have to watch it. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's uh, well, yeah. Uh, I kind of want to also talk a little bit about movie reviews, but am I am I the only one really who's done like a movie video review? Uh I would like to do a movie video because movies are one of my biggest like passion. Um, but no, I haven't yeah. made one yet. Yeah, put it put it on so. the topics list, and then I realize like, oh crap, none of the other guys have done. I'm, I <laughs> want to do that, but I'm very actually no, I am going to be doing those in the future, but not on movies themselves, but more on um video game related VHS tapes, and some of them might be movies. Okay. You know what? The one thing that's been, uh, like, I heard so many people with the whole YouTube content ID thing, especially with movies, it's like, uh, yeah. like I'm just afraid. I don't want to lose my, my oh, account. Definitely. So a lot of the movies that I, there's some obscure movies that I think, because I do like also, obscure, that I think it wouldn't be a problem. However, yeah. there's other movies that I know definitely, you know, owned by big studios. Oh, that's actually not true. I did do one without any footage of the movie was the Batman v Superman review. That was a movie review. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's it. Oh, yeah, yeah. You did do that, and that's the thing. It was. It, it, it was when very. You do it, when you it was do it very with simple, your own face. Yeah. Yes, when you do it with your own face, that's like probably the safest thing to do anyway. It's like. I I, I, I own my I own my. Yeah, I own the copyright of my face, so I think it should be okay. <laughs> yeah, I mean... I earn it now. <laughs> the thing is, like, I don't feel... Oh, shit. I don't know if I would feel comfortable doing, like... A, I mean, that would be kind of fun to do, though, because maybe I wouldn't have to be so... It wouldn't be so involved with the script. Uh, but the thing is, like, I like... The, I've done a lot of those. I've actually... I think I've done more movie reviews, honestly, than game reviews, because if you go and look at the playlist for my game reviews, I think it's a little bit shorter, honestly. But... I, I like it. I like it when I can make it like flow nicely and uh, do it because I, I I enjoy the. That's the thing. I one of my favorite things about actually doing reviews is the editing process. So like once that gets going, like I know like yes, I can kind of see where the finish line is uh, for me to get that clip in here and that. And that's that's another thing I love about the, doing the He-Man and Shira reviews, even though it is a lot of work and you know. But once I get like the script done and the voiceovers done, then it's like all uh, now I have to just get the footage and for movies it's actually usually and you know for television shows and things like it's probably a little bit easier most of the time because you only gonna have to play it at the same time or you know if you're if you're lucky enough you can just rip it off uh directly from the thing uh <clears throat> but yeah it's it's the one thing is like i have a lot of, i have a list of like common problems with video editing and one that's immediately there is that clips not man matching the length of the voiceover and that's a not, that's a big problem I've run with the movie reviews and even some of the He-Man reviews is a thing I'm I want to talk about and then actually now I remember an even more better one is when I was talking about the friggin' flower in that one when I did the reviews of the two Zelda cartoon episodes uh, when I talked about the friggin' flower in Fairies in the Spring and it's a clip that takes like in all maybe ten seconds and I spend like a whole minute talking about it basically. <laughs> so, oh no, I've I've been there before. <laughs> what I've ended up doing is I've just um. Is I just went to the um the settings and I I did like you know how you can adjust like the slow mo of it. I tried to make it as slow as possible to fill it out, and if it's like and like make it to like cut it to where um you know paste like the clip several times to give it to where it makes like a comfortable loop, so you yeah. won't tell that it's um not a one minute clip. Yeah, exactly. But <laughs> it's it's still difficult. Well, like, I, I basically ended up making a joke out of it in the in the review at least. And that, that kind of the problem fed into a solution, which was to make a joke out of it, basically. Where, where I, literally in the review, I said, like, and I've already spent fucking a, a, a minute talking about this fucking flower moving on <laughs> to the more important parts of the episode. Nice. I was talking about. Well, if we're so. talking about video editing, one my problem, one thing is I don't have a problem with um, video editing is like um, matching, you know, certain, you know, footage to certain dialogues where it makes sense. But you've also got all these long patches where, you, where you know, you have to actually fill it in with like random crap. Yeah. That's the hard part. You got to pick the most best looking games. And another thing about editing um, game reviews is sometimes the game itself does not look very interesting <laughs> when it's actually caught on um, yeah. camera. 
You, you don't have like to tell if, me. If, like, I, I've reviewed most of the games that I've reviewed have been adventure games. <laughs> Where you watch a guy walk back and forth for an hour. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, like one, one thing that is like I could see challenging because I have been thinking about one of, one of the biggest problems is to choose the games because there's like so many games. But for example, I'm sure there's people who uh, have reviewed text adventures. But I mean, talk about a game that is not very visual. You know, like, <laughs> like there's a couple of games where, where like I like games. There's co- quite a few games that I like that are not visual, like Safe House Diaries, which is completely. It's like like a zombie survival game. It's it's a turn-based RPG strategy game, but it's like you don't see really anything. All you see is like the diary updating. You see, there's little pictures of the character, and you've got a map of the location, but that's pretty much it. And uh, it's, like, pretty much old text. Like, I did a Let's Play of that twice. And uh, one, one of the things is that, yeah, like, I think that's also a lot of pe- problem with some people who do Let's Plays because, like, there's a lot of people who say that, um, like, there's certain genres you shouldn't do Let's Plays of. Like, I, I heard this one theory where somebody said you shouldn't do RPGs because they took, take forever to beat. But I think, you know, that's kind of stupid to say, honestly. Mm. Oh no, that problem isn't like with text and whatnot. is is just as um problematic as when you're reviewing visual novels. Like sure, there's pretty pictures there, but you know they're text adventures with pictures. They're like picture book addiction addictions, <laughs> picture book versions of like you know the books with words in it. That's redundant. Well, they are. They are. They're, I mean, the, the visual novel is a is a spin-off of yeah. the text adventure. Yeah, and the problem I mean, there is, are pretty much text adventures. Yeah. And the problem is when you're actually capturing like good moments of visual novels, you're worried that the text gives too too much away of the story to use. That's another yeah. problem. Yeah. So hey, so that, Ken, Ken, do you have a? Uh, we're talking about. Uh, well, we we kind of drifted off again, but a clip's not she, not matching the length of a voiceover. Have you ever had an experience when you were do, doing like a, a walkthrough video that you, there was something that you talked about, and then you for some reason you couldn't get the thing you wanted on video? Uh, has there ever been a situation like that where it's uh, uh no, I'm not really. I mean, the only thing that uh, I mean, I the only thing I can really think of is I had to go back and like re-loop a clip re-loop the same clip but uh i think it's yeah i think i don't know i i i, I, I generally have uh never run into that problem what about mistakes you <laughs> made in the review that you have oh, to then Jesus. deal with them? yeah um yeah that's i think that you either, usually put uh, the text you usually put the text there. yeah i i usually i usually throw the text in there because i figure um i mean i could always go back and add the audio in to fix the mistake but then you have continuity issue where it doesn't sound like you, you can tell that you re-recorded. Oh, definitely. In, a, in, a, in the middle of it. Um, so yeah, I, I plus I have to get uh, uh, you know I, it's not like I just pick up the uh, headset and and record with that. I have a condenser mic in uh, in my uh, recording studio, which is not even my house we have it stationed at my my dad's basement so i'd have to go all the way there just to do a five second clip no no thanks i'm not gonna do that <laughs> so uh <laughs> so yeah i just throw i just i when i whenever i realize i fucked up like that i'll just i'll just splice in uh text to correct it uh that's that's fair and all but sometimes i make mistakes where i completely forget to say certain things about the re- reviews like I remember, like, like going back to my back in 1995 review. Yes, I know it sounds like I'm advertising the shit out of that review in that episode, but that's not the case. Like during the recording process, I was like, I was nearly done editing the episode, and then I listened to it, I was like, I, for- I forgot to talk about the one of the biggest features in the game. <laughs> so I had to like, you know, splice out the thing in the middle, re-record it, and since this, and especially a problem when you have like two different microphones for that one review, because you know you get like. One microphone I got upgraded, like this one, you can clearly hear it. Like it clearly sticks out like a sore thumb. And another problem is trying to match like the consistency with my voice. Like try to sound the same as like doing the rest of the review too, which yeah. can cover. Yeah, yeah, that can be a problem. That, that's why it's good to have multiple takes and then, it is. Uh, and then just you know splicing the best one. And I, I think I, I think well, I, got, I think I got everyone beat as far as like uh, a mistake. That made it into the final review, and I think it's Vern Troyer's ethnicity. 
<laughs> the, in my postal, re- postal movie review. <laughs> oh, there have been. Yeah. Yeah. I rem- That's, I, I, that I is completely that. inexcusable, yeah. and I think I talked about it on a previous White Devil, so I don't want to dedicate too much time for it. So, <laughs> so but that's um, pretty bad. It, <laughs> other problematic mistakes is like when your grammar's all wrong in the um, review, oh, yeah. like not purposely wrong. Like you listen back to it, like I say, like this instead of. Then it just sounds weird, and, and sometimes I change it, but sometimes I'm like, eh, I hope no one notices it. And of course, as yeah. soon as I upload the review, all my friends are in my st- are in like the um chat room saying, "You said this, you said that." It's just like, Ugh. yeah, yeah. I, I I have I have a problem with mistakes because one of the things that really grinds me down is that I I write I finish thing or and I or the video I render it and uh, it can take quite a while. Then I upload it, and then the like. Sometimes I I re, I recognize the like I check for mistakes, and sometimes I then I watch it, and then I'm and then I then I see the mistake, and then I have to fix it and re-render it. Um, one point I do remember that uh, one of the mistakes I had uh, is like like uh, where I repeated a clip in the Lionheart review, where it like like that, and that wasn't necessary because I had other footage that I could have put in there. So yeah. As have any of you ha- have been in the experience where sometimes your mistake ended up being a happy accident instead? I th- I think I might have uh, had something to that effect. I'm trying to remember what the specifics of it was. Do any of you? Yeah, that sounds familiar. I mean, it, it it's definitely happened in other outlets for them the, than video making, but uh, but I can't think of an example. I'm pretty sure though that I I can definitely sympathize with it. I think that that certainly has happened. Yeah, because. When I was doing like my opening segment on like Neo Retro games in in a certain review that I've mentioned a bunch of times in this one, I accidentally rendered the file the file wrong to where it had like it was like nearly in like four by three instead of like you know sixteen by nine. I nearly grabbed an axe and just smashed my computer for that until I had like what is it? Some of my friends saying that this unintentionally made it review better because it helped emphasize on old games. You know like how those old games always had like the black bars on the side. So it helped, you know, enhance the um, feeling of old games instead of turn into a mistake. Hmm. I, I think uh, what was what was something that I think a happy accident, and it's kind of sad to say, this was probably my second review as of a whole because that was the one I, I entered in the Al Salieri's reviewing contest, and it got shredded. And uh, he actually made fun of me, made a parody of me. Well, that's what Al Salieri does. So, but however. Like I was kind of I was really pissed at it at the time and everything, but and I told this story already many times. But the funny thing is that uh, Critical Failure had the idea to use that for for the next uh, next po- for the next round podcast that clip where he makes fun of it and uh, with the Tyrant 2000 uh, music because that was the review I made. So yeah, that's that's the thing. So yeah, I don't know. I'm thinking about like a fact that I when I slice up like bits of video to use in the final uh, thing and I just kind of move them around the timeline in my in, in power director because uh, to somewhere where there isn't like a video spot currently vacant so you know those videos those clips will be there and if I notice a place where I can use them I can just kind of grab and stick and I think there's maybe been a couple of instances where the place where I kind of just randomly placed it, it just seemed to fit perfectly with what was going on. Uh, it was it was one of, usually probably in one of those situations where I wasn't talking about anything in the review, you know, the the game, the movie, or the He-Man episode that I was reviewing. Like nothing, I wasn't talking about anything specifically, but then it fit. There's been a couple of instances in the He-Man reviews where I've accidentally voice, where I've accidentally uh, synchronized my own speech with the characters talking. Where I think it was in the bottom ten He-Man episodes list, the old one, and I really need to redo that one. But there's, I was talking about the, um, it was in the time corridor bit, and where I was asking a question, isn't uh, the logical question of why is Skeletor trying to destroy Castle Grayskull? Isn't he usually trying to conquer it? And then I ended up ended it with. Uh, whatever, and it just perfectly matched up with Skeletor. It just, at that moment, it cuts to Skeletor saying something, and his mouth movement just perfectly matched up with my with what I was saying. And that, that, nice. that, that was kind of funny. <laughs> yeah, I've, I've definitely yeah. had moments yeah, where the video well, whatever. syncs up perfectly, and uh, sometimes it's like a stretch of things. Like, I'll talk about three specific things that happen 
uh, and the clip that I set up lines lines up exactly with uh, with what I'm saying. I, that's definitely happened to me before. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think in one of my um, videos, I think it was in my um, top five underrated YouTube channels. I I think. <laughs> I think I um I think I accidentally synced with you with you, Hanu. That oh. sounds dirtier than what it needed to be. But... <laughs> no, that that's not dirty. But, but... No, and I and I put in like the box there, unintentional lip syncing. Yeah, I think I noticed that. Where where did you get that footage of me? Was it the one where I was talking about uh my about the water damage in my apartment? <laughs> I I don't remember where I got the clips. I did was because just I was thinking because that's the one where I had that's where the one one I, where I had the really shitty lighting. Like the light on top of me was just. Like, oh no! Like, I think yeah. it was from your um. I think it was. No it wait, might have you, been you got from you your 10th that from my USSR video. series, didn't you? No, it was from your 10th anniversary showcase. Was it? Oh. Yeah, which was awkward because the first clip that slid in there was the sex scene from Heavy Metal. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember putting that in there. <laughs> <laughs> okay then. It might have just been your um heavy metal review. Oh no 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 it was it was from your heavy metal review. Okay then. <laughs> Man, I have never done so much like covering up and syncing up like hearts and smiley faces. <laughs> and it, it didn't help. It didn't help where it's where it synced up with someone was like I like this channel so much. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Oh boy. Ooh. I have another common problem listed here, which is editing flops. Is there a flop of editing that you've done before that just always bothers you that you come back to, but you couldn't fix it because of fa because of reasons? <laughs> yeah, there was uh, a few times the cursor showed up. Oh, yeah. uh, I mean, that's no huge deal, but I mean, that, that there's, there's been a few times where that happened and I didn't notice. And then there was one where you could clearly see me uh, opening up the drop-down menu, and I don't know how the hell I brain farted yeah. that one out. But... I, think, I think it was in the Swamp Thing review. It I was think. Swamp Thing, yeah. Yes, yes, that was where it is. And also from that same but I've... bottom 10 He-Man videos list, you can tell... Because of that back then I was doing the video capture with the cord and playing the things off of my Xbox and uh, capturing it. You can see the Xbox DVD menu just for a brief second during the number one entry. <laughs> because it, where I was where I was fast forwarding and then stopping on the correct clip. <laughs> yeah, and I can never oh. unsee it now that I I know it's. Yeah, there. we don't we don't have a uh, you know it's not like we have a crack team of people that re racks all this shit. Yeah. No. <laughs> I have those problems, like, sometimes, like, in some times, like, I try to edit out as much as possible, but sometimes it sneaks in. Like, the bar, like, saying, like, the bar, like, on the bottom of the YouTube video that I saw, you know, captured the footage from, pops up. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Which is actually, I've had to do that a lot recently because of the Shira, because I don't have any of the Shira DVD releases. Well, I do have one, but it's just the movie, and then... Uh, it has like five episodes of the series in it, but the, all that other one that comes straight from YouTube. And luckily, there's been uh, lot, lots of like dedicated Chira fans who've been updating, who've been uploading those episodes, so I can use them <laughs> <laughs> for my reviews. But yeah, that's kind of that's another challenge. Uh, I have another topic here, which is not um, having what you. Yeah, need. I, I, oh, I, yes. I, I want to say something. I was just waiting. Okay. Um, Sorry. Yeah. Go ahead. What, what, no, no. Um, one of the biggest things I had, and it took me a while to figure it out, is how to uh, change the aspect ratio because often there would be like the black bars and, and the, like frames. And especially in the intro, it was at times annoying because you could see like at times the uh, frame rate counter for the uh, fusion emulator yeah. and uh, like little things like that. And I usually see the mistakes. Um, like, uh, also when I did animation in the early episodes, there's some of the cells that I, you know, I was just kind of just figuring out Photoshop. So there's, there's a, a whole slew of mistakes. That's why at times uh, there's certain videos I just cannot watch because like, I, I, I all I see is the mistakes. You know? Oh, so. definitely. I've been there. Cause it goes under the fact that, um, the artists are their own worst critic. Oh yeah. <laughs> Oh yeah. <laughs> uh, what's another? Uh, I'll think about another editing flop. But I, there's one thing that drives me nuts, and it's something that I try to avoid nowadays when I do the movie reviews. Is that uh, when I'm editing and I'm showing like a clip of a scene going on, uh, and then if I'm cutting it to go to another scene that I'm going to talk about, if there's an 
if there's a cut in the movie right at that moment, just before I the scene cuts away, that's that's something. Do, do, do you guys understand what I'm talking about? Mm. Yeah. Where in the movie there is a cut, and then just a, like a second before I do a cut to another thing in the movie, like it'll just for a, like a second show, like something completely unrelated. Like that 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 always drives me crazy, and it sometimes I it's been left in a couple of my movie reviews, and I still when I watch those back, watch back back to those. Uh, that's a that's a kind of a problem. And it's actually also if we're going back to the uh, I, I wanted to say this point when you when Dorapka mentioned the content uh, matching thing and yes that's a problem if you want to use the footage that's that's obviously a problem. The thing that I've been using it doesn't always work but it seems to work a lot of the time is like people might have noticed recently that the HM Productions logo has started to pop up in the top corners of the video and that's my kind of anti measure if you will against that. I don't know how it, it 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 doesn't work all the time. Like somebody will they will still sometimes get matches, but it seems to work some mo- a lot of the times. Mm. So that's that's one that's solution. Cool. Yeah, that's one solution. Mm. I mean, it's you have to block off a little bit of the area because uh, anyway, uh, uh, one big one video where I had big problem I had a big problem with that was when I did the Sean Connery dubs movies video. And I finally got it on YouTube, but I had to put a, put a big fucking HM Productions logo on it to really like cover it up enough so it didn't start getting blocked from, from YouTube because it was that was the problem it was getting blocked so that nobody was able to watch it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's it's just really annoying, and that's why I've been really cautious not to pull, not to not to. Uh, I'm thinking of doing the other route of if I'm gonna do a movie review. Um, uh, again, I want to do it with like uh, one of the alternate video streaming services and uh, like uh, what is it? Yeah, well, one of the other ones. I cannot think of the name. Their names. Vimeo. Now. <laughs> Vimeo or something like that. So Daily Motion. Like I hear Daily Motion is a, a bit more lax. So. Yep. Google Video. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, actually, I heard that too. Um, so. Yeah. Okay. Uh. Uh, next, next on the list, I wanted to ask, uh, what's the best you felt after making a video? What, what's a video that when you finished it, make finished making it, you felt like, yes, this was a really good video. The, like you were really, really happy with yourself after you finished it. Well, some I feel good when I finish it, but then paranoia quickly seeps right into your brain. It's like, are people gonna like it? What are people gonna hate about it? Am I gonna get noticed by this? Oh no! Where do, should I prepare for fame? Should I prepare to go broke? Should I be homeless? Should I? Should I blah, 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 blah. A million problems <laughs> just flow through your head. You tend to overreact. Yeah. Well, actually, that something I I, I I wasn't sure if I it was go if I was gonna ask this, but uh, just for the interest of full disclosure, we're talking about video making in general, but are does anybody here make videos in a way that you also uh, that you've monetized your channel that you make that you make money off of it? No, because I do this for the love of gaming, not for money. Yep. And besides, yeah. getting, getting free press games for review is good enough payment as it is. Um, I have I have them monetized, um, but it's more like I don't really I haven't even made money with it. Not because I'm like want to do this as a career necessarily. Um, I just have it monetized uh, because I have been for a while. It's just kind of just an idea that I wanna. I just wanna ha- like like make the 100 bucks at maybe one time. I think it would be kind of cool. But it's more just for the idea of it. Um, uh, like yeah, because if people really don't want to see it, like if people really complain, I-, I might turn it off. And there's ad block, so yeah. What about Ken? Uh, yeah, mine are my YouTube videos are not monetized. Um, I was at one point um, I was uh, uh, affiliated with GutGame.com for my Atari reviews, and where where they were exclusive to the website for uh, for two weeks at a time before they would get re-uploaded to you, they would get uploaded in full to YouTube, and I was getting uh, paid by them uh, based on. Uh, you know the, the the hits that they would get on their site, and you know it was like a, it, it wasn't a lot. It was I think I made like I don't know maybe like thirty five bucks or something like that total for the you know the duration, but um I but I left them not because of any kind of qualms with them. Uh, I just it was just taxing to you know put up the trailer review to redirect you to the website and then you know 
delete it and upload the full video on YouTube and, you know, make a, a you know, a screen cap thing. It was just like another chore. Plus, I had, you know, uh, obligations to upload at least once a month. And I was, you know, I, I'd rather just have the freedom to not have that. I, and I just said, screw it. You know, I'll just <laughs> I'll just go back to the way it was before. It's not like it, it anything had changed, really. It was just a little more of a chore to have that going but no i don't have anything monetized and i don't plan to for yeah pretty much everything kaiser yeah and also so i i also don't belong i also belong to the people who do not have never had uh, their channel monetized which some people might find a little hard to believe considering like the rate at which i upload videos uh but it's it, it's true like it, and it, for me it's it's just a principled thing like for me it's this is this is obvi- obviously something I love a lot, and that's why I commit so much time, so much of my free time to it. But it's like something that, uh, it, it said, it, to, to give people a little bit of an idea where we're coming from as video creators or whatever YouTubers, uh, reviewers, whatever you want to call call us collectively, is that we all do this kind of more or less because we just like doing it, and it's not for us. It's not like a livelihood thing, and I can understand for those people for whom it is. A livelihood thing they actually are trying to support themselves then you you're obviously your goals and also the way by which you go about making videos is go, it's gonna have to be very uh, much your, your whole your whole philosophy for video making is gonna be very different especially if you're because when you are making a living off of YouTube your goal your priority is how do I grab the most amount of people to watch my video because that's the only way I'm gonna make a decent living off of it which is not the priority yeah. for us. And so that's why I've never yeah. felt – that's why I've never felt a pressure to be, like, on top of things as far as doing reviews. And as th- that's why I don't bother with modern game reviews. And that's why I got – there was a, there was just recently there was some guy when I did my Dita or Life 5 review who got on my case for reviewing the original version of the game. And by then, like, the final round and everything got there. And I, 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 re- I, I replied to that guy a couple of times. And then I just ended up removing those comments altogether and just blocking it because I, it was just like aggravating as all hell that somebody would actually get on my case for that. So it was like, oh fuck this. <laughs> it's, 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 really? it's the internet. Yeah, it's the, some some it, people are just petty bastards. Yeah, exactly. Yep. So yeah. Um, w- one because, thing. Because one I, thing I, I was really say. because I was about to say like I was really happy with that review video. I had not, not done a uh, an Xbox a review of an Xbox 360 game. For a while, I don't remember what was the last game I reviewed. It was must have been the Sonic Adventure ones where I captured from, but that was, but even that was like a download game. So I was doing that whole game thing, and I felt really happy with that review at the end of it. I was, I was really like, man, I did a really good job with that. And then somebody has to fucking shit on it, of course. Well, yeah. it's yeah. like building <laughs> it's, a really, it's, it's like building a really high sandcastle for one of the bratty kids to come over and kicks it down. Yeah. Uh, I, I just want to quick say about the monetization after you guys saying that I do feel a bit like, you know, like a sellout. But honestly, I don't really make money with it. Yeah. It's more to me I started it and I just want to like – I actually probably am going to stop the uh, monetization uh, once once I do get the one payout. Not because like it's a big deal for me. Um, I, I might even stop it earlier. It's just I have it set up uh, if, if – because I really, I really do do it for for the love of of the of the channel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, and, no, no, no. Uh, just yeah, we, we weren't. I wasn't implying that. I was just saying saying uh-huh. that that was kind of the thing. And you, okay, it, you, yeah. made, um, you made your, you explained yourself well enough. Uh, yes. Okay. Yeah. And uh, another reason why I don't monetize, like another reason. This is gonna sound dorky of me, but I just feel guilty about about making money for other people's like work. You know, I feel like I'm. You know, like like doing video game reviews, it's like it feels like I'm I'm making money that I shouldn't earn for just because I'm using footage of of something that I didn't create, like as in video game footage wise. Yeah, and uh, the, the thing is, like I'm also kind of paranoid about getting like those copyright strikes because uh, obviously, oh, definitely. If, if you do, if you did not see uh, the 10th anniversary video that I did, and like yes, I've been doing YouTube for 10 years, uh, yeah, that like. <laughs> Thank you. Some applause from the from the panel. Uh, the, the what I was. Yeah, that's pretty yeah, awesome, man. Yeah, the 2009. The late, I, I put little headlines for all the years. And 2009. That's back when my old YouTube channel got taken down. 
And I suspect it was because of some of those videos that had copyrighted material and because I never bothered to – because back then I didn't bother with any of the copyright notices or strikes uh, and things like that. And because I didn't do that, because I, that was something I neglected, that's why that happened. So uh, so now I am a little paranoid about it, and I try to keep the amount of videos that get those – if it gets a notice and if it doesn't require for me to do anything – then it's fine. It's okay. And I always check my the reputation on my channel and everything. But if it's if it is uh, a block, you know that's obviously a big problem. Well, it's a pressure problem from the point of view that nobody will be able to see the video. Anyway, uh, uh, but let's get back to the topic, which was best you felt after making a video. Does anybody else have a have a best you have felt after making a video a story? Well, best best or or relieved is another one. Um, <laughs> I'd say. <laughs> Yeah, that's, that's, a good that's, one. that's a good that's a good feeling to have too. Because yeah. that would definitely there's more been more distinct uh, m moments of that when I've made really long ones like the Metal Gear Solid games and um, and Mario Three. Oh, Those yeah. were the most taxing and time consuming. Uh, and Resident Evil on PlayStation. Those be just because of how. Um, how long the videos were. In fact, some of those I do know I was simultaneously working on that video with um, with uh, a more you know conventional length video at the same time, so that way I wouldn't have like this huge gap of time in between videos um, if I was strictly working on the you know the longer one. So yeah, that one was very those those in particular were very re uh, relieving because you know, like I said, how how much time was being put into it. Yeah. Um, for a, me, for me. Oh, go ahead. Sorry. Yeah. yeah, I was just about to. I, I just quickly say, to add to that that yes, I, I always when I do finish one of those review videos, I do always feel really, really good after it's done. Uh, but it was like the the dead. I brought up the Dead or Alive one ju just because I hadn't done a, a game review from that system uh, before, and I wasn't sure how it was going to turn out. And when it turned out so well. You know, that's why I felt so good about it. That's why I felt so shitty about it when that guy crapped on it. But okay, sorry. Yeah, Daraka, go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> well, I, I definitely felt relief also, pretty much uh, that it's it's done, it's out there, and also excitement. Um, one video that I think I enjoyed the most was Franco the Crazy Deve Revenge because I wanted to. I knew about this game for many for a long time, and I wanted to review it for such a long time, and. What I was excited for is the response because I had multiple Polish people uh, write pretty, pretty uh, encouraging posts. Because I, I do get also negative posts like uh, on certain videos, and for most of them I erase them, except maybe on the Virtual Warriors one because they're supposed to be. Th that, that's the show I make where you know fictional characters fight each other. Yeah. Where I use like a Freedom Force game engine, kind of like Death Battle. And so this is yep, supposed to be fictional characters it, such as me. <laughs> yeah, you are you are, you are a fictional character, Kaiser. Yeah. But anyway, um, so so the the thing is that those are made to to uh, to to discuss. So if people are discussing, even if they're more negative, there's some people. There's one guy who said like it was like what Justice League versus um, versus Avengers, and he said, well, Superman could beat everyone. It's like uh, you suck. You should you should stop making videos. You know, just 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 retire. <laughs> you know, like like I I, I didn't get yeah, that, kill that's yourself. A bold statement, that's like dude, the to go into anybody's video. You suck. You should stop making videos. <laughs> like you know. Oh, uh, I, I I've got I've erased a lot of them. I I don't think I don't know if I've erased that one. I usually don't erase it from the virtual wars because I want I want them to discuss. And there's gonna be differences of opinion. Uh, one that is heavily discussed is what is it? The Justice League versus Godzilla, and uh, like, it, and and I don't. I'm a fan of the Justice League. I don't try to make them lose. It's the AI fighting, and uh, like, I just make the stats for the characters, yeah. and then I let them fight. So, um, but yeah, um, I, I think that's that's a. Uh, it's it's kind of these these some of these vid uh, comments. Some of them are just annoying. Like like when somebody said like. For the uh, Castlevania port comparison, they said, "Well, if you use this, you know, the DOS version does have better music. If you use this uh, obscure sound card, and I'm like, well, if I can figure it out with DOSBox, then if you can tell me how to do that, then congratulations. Other than that, you're just like a wiki wizard, and thank you very much. I gotta go to hell." So. Yeah, some people are just plain rude. Yeah. 
Yeah, but that's, it's the internet. That's how it is, man. So yeah. I've learned that the hard way. And mm-hmm. what about Kaiser? Do you did you did you already tell you your? I already said it the first. Oh, I said yeah, yeah, first yeah. is like it's like relief. Yeah. Then followed by then sleep. Then coming in pretty quickly is paranoia. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And what about uh? Okay, and then I have the opposite. What about the worst video making experience you've had? Well, um. Yeah, you know what though? For me, this was a um. The, the I don't know. If, it's probably the first. The first one that comes to mind is I finished the video, and this was back when um. This was back when YouTube had the ten minute uh. You know, time limit. So I had it was in three parts. Uh. You know, of oh, you yeah. know ten minutes each. So it was a thirty minute thirty minute video. I had it finished, and I was uploading it to three parts. And this was back when I had uh. This was back on Windows Movie Maker. Yes. I uploaded the first. I, I rendered the first part fine, and then I think it was a second or a third. I think it was a second one. Uh, it just wouldn't work. It, it just didn't render, and it was just said, you know, it had this random error, and it and there was no, no way to fix it. I kept trying. Uh, uh, I, I tried to re-render it. Still hadn't, you know, this rendering issue, and I was like, shit. You know, I went through all that, and now I'm rendering them in there, and it's not gonna work. I, and it turned out the only way I could fix it was to cut it in half render that and then take the second half uh, yeah. and this wasn't as easy as just chopping it in half you had to you know line everything up when you re-rendered the second half so i had to split part two into two halves and then put those together and then render those and then render the third one and yeah <laughs> that, that and that and that wasn't something that i first off it was it was it was it was time consuming and tedious but it was also it i didn't figure it out right away either you know so it was it was it was it was also you know a review that took some time to put together and and it was that's the worst right there is when you're right at the very end and you run into a problem yeah yeah oh like, i better. agree yeah good uh, good that's old movie bad, maker yeah. good old movie maker like we i i have some stories about movie maker because that's what i used to i still make the cartoons on <laughs> But the thing is, like, now that I, I have the skill set that I didn't have back in 2006, 2007, where I kind of know the ins and outs of it. And the big problem when we used to do those cartoons, or when I used to do make, make cartoons, is that if the cartoon was running, uh, it didn't even have to be very long. Like, I'm th- thinking, like, even a three-minute video. But let's, let's say, like, five-minute cartoon that I was making, that the voiceover, it, it was always the length of voiceover that kind of determined how long it was going to be. That... After about a minute and a half uh, of putting in individual frames and uh, people talking and uh, walking and things like that, that that movie, what would happen a lot of times is with Movie Maker is that it would just start crashing like crazy. Like you would get a few frames in, and then all of a sudden nothing nothing was happening, and the whole fucking thing crashed. And then you had to hope and pray that it saved. You know, a, yep. just a little automatically, oh. just a little bit of that work, so you didn't have to do it all over again. And then oh, eventually, no, okay, because I, I think the problem was that it was just having to duplicate those files over and over again in the edit mode, so it was kind of like just it was just kind of badly programmed thing in the in, in the it was just a flaw in the design of Movie Maker in general. And then come like maybe I, and like 2010, 2011, it suddenly like dawned on me. You know what? If I just make the cartoon in like one minute bits, then it won't matter <laughs> because <laughs> like such an obvious solution. It took me like three, at least three years to figure out. Like, oh man, if I just do this, then I don't have to. Uh, then I don't have to put up with the aggravation of making a five-minute video and having it crash every every, every two minutes. <laughs> One of the problems was for me like file corrupting or like where it, it um, file corruption or when I'm trying to render it, it, it there's some problem. There's there's yeah. lots of things. I mean, do you mean like just the process of making the video yeah, yeah, yeah. or well, uh, well, the experience? Yeah, yeah okay. something something about that the whole experience that just made okay, it. Okay, I, I have a, something. <laughs> I, I had I had a thing about uh, if you're talking strictly the process. Yeah. Um, then it was definitely also the Castlevania port comparison because <laughs> I had to do that. I ha- I I had basically talked to um, um, Michael from Michael Retroware uh, 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 Retro Game Reviews at uh, Retroware Retro Game Reviews, and he like me, him and me we had the idea that he's gonna do a Castlevania review and I'm gonna do a comparison. It just kind of happened like that. And then he said, hey, you, uh, I can give you a shout-out. Uh, I'm going to post it at that point. 
So I had to finish it at a certain time, and uh, like capturing the footage for the different types of games for different emulators was really hard. And I had my old laptop, so there was performance issues, uh, and, and the sound would corrupt, and it would just—it was just so aggravating. Uh, I, w- I tried fraps. I tried. I tried all different kinds of uh, v- video capture programs, and and I think I even like bought one or something, uh, and it didn't. It wasn't as good, honestly. And and uh, I thought I, I wasn't able to make it. And but I did. I did eventually. That's why I haven't made a new one because um, I'm just kind of. Although now I think I could do it now because uh, I found I I have I have more experience, but. It was definitely very just capturing footage and then uh, just just looking for mistakes and and rendering it and re-rendering it. That's that's kind of grinds you down. Mm. Yeah. What about Kajer? Uh, sorry. <laughs> I was just thinking for a second there. No, uh, yeah. Some problems I've had, especially with Windows Movie Maker, is sometimes as soon as I boot it up, it crashes right away. <laughs> <laughs> so I, well, at least the problem gets uh, it hits you immediately. And, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 And what about what about a worst the, what about a worst uh, video making experience? Oh, that's what I'm ta- that's what I'm trying to get to. Excuse me, it's like two o'clock in the morning, so excuse me if I'm a bit oh, yeah, slow. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, worst editing experience. It's like one of the worst ex- editing experiences I had was editing together that latest um, Sonic Adventure Two Let's Play. It's like there was like it was originally just one big one hour part with like all these beautiful gags, all these one, one thing, but by the time um, it got to the, it was like I was getting ready to render it, I forgot to save it, and when I clicked render, the whole thing crashed and didn't recover it. Oh my god. Wow. <laughs> so I did it again, which I saved this time, and the software kept on crashing with rendering it, and I found out I had to take out a bunch of music because there was too much things going on in there. Oh yeah. Which... which yeah, because if you notice in those videos, there's a lot of silence. Like originally, I was filled up with like, you know, music to help make the thing go together. Yeah. Well, what actually went? Well, the music I was originally supposed to play was just the chicken dance over and over. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> so what I had to do was I had to cut into two 30-minute parts, and even then, the first part still wouldn't render. I had to take out more music and just leave it very bare bones. Still wouldn't render. Then I had to take out all of the cutaway gags. Then it rented. Wow. Yeah. That's terrible. Oh, yeah. Uh, yep. And another worst video making experience is like when uploading, like trying to upload my old videos to YouTube. One of them is, of course, my series Kaiser Records, which is awkward release on YouTube because that series wasn't originally made for YouTube. It sucks when you like upload an episode and it just cuts out the music, even when it's for educational purposes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's the thing that I've been worried about too because I really like I really like the Kaiser Records series. So yeah, mm-hmm. and yet YouTube doesn't even notice that my the intro theme to the um show was Egg Raid on Mojo by the Beastie Boys. Well, <laughs> you, you say that now. Yeah, then, I, you, I, then you check then you check the your friggin' uh, copyright notices page immediately after this podcast, and you'll notice all of them. Black. Oh yeah. <laughs> so far, the only two notices I've had on that show is one was a Ven Sevenfold. It cut it out, and the second one was was Lincoln Park. It didn't cut out Lincoln Park, which a lot of people probably would have wanted that one to be cut out. <laughs> <laughs> it just it just blocked it from um being monetized as well. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I, 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 the Kaiser Records show is is really good, and I, and I was sad, saddened in the blip, blip apocalypse when that went down. So I'm happy that uh, they've been returning. But yeah, yeah, which really makes me worried about uploading my K on episode or re-uploading my K on episode. Yeah, and uh, if I'll quickly uh, tell my worst video making experiences, because actually Aqualong has to sadly uh, leave us in about in a in a little bit. Uh, <clears throat> So I have two experiences, and actually one of them I was reminded of. It wasn't making the video itself wasn't a terrible experience, but what happened to it after that is is actually just a little while ago I was listen I was listening in on our old Gabriel Knight 2 Let's Play, and I relate the sad history the sad story of what happened to my uh, top seven Police Academy movies video, <laughs> which I made when I was in Glasgow, and I l- uploaded to YouTube, and I was planning to redo it. Because it was me talking in front of the camera and then with the movie posters flashing in. 
and that was that was the video. And I'm thinking of saving the voiceover of that and putting it in a new video with all the video footage from the Police Academy movies to go with it. And unfortunately, the all I had it on the laptop that I had with me in Glasgow. And what happened between then and when I was planning to do it, uh, the laptop broke, and uh, we lost all the files that were on there, including all, pretty much all the videos that I made in Glasgow. I've salvaged like a few from downloading them back from YouTube, but unfortunately by then I had already deleted it, deleted the Police Academy one off of YouTube, and so I couldn't get it back. So it's been lost forever, basically. Yeah. So that was kind Yikes. of. Yikes! I saw that one. That's one of the videos I remember the most. Yeah. <laughs> oh man, I, I missed out, and I'm a big Police Academy fan, so yeah, yeah. I would have so, enjoyed that. Yeah, so maybe sometime in the future I'll finally give it another crack at it, because I do, uh, I mean, I have a version of that list basically on the blog, but I kind of wanted to have it on the video. But no, the absolute worst, and it's it got so bad that I eventually ended up removing the video from YouTube, was uh, the making of it. The making of it wasn't that bad. It was kind of interesting and even funny and challenging, and it was the movie where I was talking about the... Christopher Nolan Batman trilogy and all the things I hated about it. And I knew it was going to be a little bit of a sore sore point for some people anyway, so I tried to make it kind of funny and jokey and so not so hopefully people wouldn't take it too seriously. But it literally I think it's one of the few videos in my on my channel that has ever gotten to that point where we're, we're number one like really nasty comments all the time which you can ignore that at at least. But then like the thumbs down ratio got so bad and it's just like I, I I just, you know, even though I try not to let it bother me, like I kind of get bugged out by the fact that I might have just ruined someone's day by shitting on that movie. And so it finally got to the point where, I, you know what, fuck it, I, I'll take this movie. It'll be a weight off my mind <laughs> to just take it off the YouTube. It's like I put so much effort into it, and it was there for a very long time. But I finally, like, decided, well, it's gotten to the point where, like, everybody's just shitting on the video. Like, I, it's not it's not worth having Having there, and I, you know, that's the thing with a lot of my videos is like I, I sometimes have, I definitely have opinions that sometimes go against the grain of what's popular uh, or anything, and uh, I might have so- something like that. And it's like the, the, the snap reactions from YouTubers, of course, the, you're always gonna get those nasty comments and everything. And I, even I, and I, even I get stuck in the, uh, in the trap of it, which is like I sometimes I see something and I just want to like write a really angry review, uh, really angry like comment on something. But then I I have to have that moment where I just kind of stop and take a breath and wonder, you know, once I've calmed the fuck down and I'm reading this review, like I'm uh, I'm not not review, but this uh, comment that I'm just writing, like am I am I gonna be able to read it and not cringe at myself for having written it? And I, I'll, oftentimes that stops me from writing like really shitty comments. So yep, could yeah. could, he- could heads, oh, could heads, cool heads. Um, yeah, yeah, it's good to come. Yeah, cool they, head. They, they, that's yeah. what happens. Yeah, yeah. and yeah, just I remember agree with this, that. this old ancient saying. Definitely, this old ancient saying definitely um, applies to YouTube too. Children can be cruel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yep. Yeah, I, I've got one more thing on the list that I wanted to talk about was videos you videos you to never make. So I don't know if you if, if you can do you have do you, would you quickly like put up somewhere uh, maybe maybe give if you have your thoughts if you have any oh, thoughts about that. But oh, definitely videos I'd never make. Well, yeah, but Ken, hopefully but never if, make. If Ken, if, oh, Ken, if Ken has anything to add, say to that, because he has to be going in a minute, so... That's, oh, sorry, that's, honey. Uh, probably uh, porn. <laughs> I don't think I'd make that. <laughs> okay. that's, that's very straightforward. <laughs> it was worth it. Okay, then. Uh, but, uh, but, but in all seriousness, though, so, um, mm. I mean, I don't think so. I don't really have any, um, you know... Uh, Besides that, I guess, uh, <laughs> any strict no pol- uh, policies on what I don't do. But I don't – I mean th- considering I've kind of been relatively one-dimensional, I don't think that uh, – I mean there's, there's a lot that I certainly won't make, but I don't uh, But I don't rule anything out media-wise. Yeah. You know, like I, I mean we will did, I do, have to do a movie review? Probably yeah. not, but possibly. Uh, yeah, there's the cartoons, and we did do – there's one, one – one video, of course, that we did do that was kind of outside of what we what we normally do when we cooperate, and that was the heavy metal facts video. Uh, if you still remember that. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and that was that was an interesting experience. I, I like that video actually a lot. <clears throat> I kind of wish we would have 
maybe don't. There was a joke that we ne that never quite panned out uh, with that video. Was uh, was that? Uh, well, I, I'm not sure if we did, but we were trying to kind of sneak a six 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 joke into that video, where it was like uh, sets of six facts, or was it like three and three? And that would be six and three and three. Yeah, it was, would, it, 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 it was something along those lines. Yeah, but uh, yeah, and at the, some yeah, point, yeah, I've drawn a blank, I, but but that but that that definitely is. That, that definitely was part yeah, of the discussion, because it, yeah. Yeah, it kept kind of mutating. We also thought about, like, the running time would kind of amount to, like, six minutes and 66 seconds, which would have been actually, like, seven minutes and... Seven minutes and six seconds, yeah. Yeah, so <laughs> so it never it never really kind of panned out, and I, 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 that, was, that was a little disappointing, but it still it still came out as a really good video. I had to re-upload it at one point, though, because I did have... Because, again, because of a copyright match on some... I think it was some. It was either an Aussie or a Dio music video. I had to edit out a bit of it and put in something else. I think it must have been the Aussie Osborne suicide solution trivia bit about the uh, the lawsuits. I think that was the thing. Yeah. 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 There were a lot of clips, so there was there were a lot of possibilities. I, 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 I guess Aussie wasn't all aboard with your review. <laughs> sure. Oh wait. <laughs> don't don't just worry, the whole video honey. Being. Could have the whole podcast without something punny in there. Yeah, that was Don't good. worry. There's bound to be no more tears from now on. <laughs> ah, okay. <laughs> oh. On that note, I think I'm going to go. <laughs> <laughs> All aboard! <laughs> the oh. disco train. All right, yeah. Okay, well, if... if uh, Ken, are you... are you if, if you're going to depart with us, I think we should make it official now that you are departing from the podcast and we'll... Yes. Uh, it's, been, it's been a pleasure uh, having we'll, you we'll on. It was a fun. It was having up you on the match game again, and hope to have you Absolutely. again soon. Yep. Yeah. Great time. Yeah. Same here. Cheers, yeah. guys. Later. All Cheers. Right. Bye. 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 All right. And then they were free. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, um. Okay. I'd, uh, I'd like to say in the video that that topic. Uh, let's continue with that topic, which is the yeah. videos you'd never make. Darapka or Kaiser, which one? Which one of you wants to go first? I'm. I'm okay if you go, Kaiser. It's okay, I'm gonna go first then. Because I wanted go, to go, go first, ahead. damn it. Um, yeah. <laughs> okay. Some videos that I'll never make. Hopefully, just remember, there's always a chance we might change. Nothing is forever, unfortunately. Well, except for forever. Forever is forever, because it's forever. It's omniscient. It's forever. Um, but no, some videos that I hopefully that I'll never make. One is like making um spiteful audio commentaries over someone else's Let's Play. Like um what Retsu Play do. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I just I just find stuff like that very not my kind of thing. Yeah, I was I was about to ask like who the fuck even does that, but then I remember there's a lot of people who actually do shit like that. Yeah. I I'll try not to make um angry rant videos about certain other YouTubers. That's what talking to friends about on on Skype's all about. Yeah, and that's another problem. Yeah, I I, I there there used to be a, a time when I did do rant videos and. I kind of look back at them. I, I've kept them around just for, I don't know, nostalgia's sake or something. But it's honestly like something, something that I, I don't really feel feel comfortable making anymore these days. It was like a really, really negative. It, it's some, something that I ha feel like I have to rip a new one. Like, uh, it's it's just like uh, I end up feeling like shitty afterwards uh, myself for doing that. So it's it's much mm -hmm. more better to have. Well, actually, like this, like the podcast format, I think is actually much better because, and especially because I, I like getting like someone else's input on the whole matter. Because if it's just me fuming by myself, it's like you know, it's like an uh, I don't know what, what to say, like an angry masturbation fest or something like that. <laughs> so, so sadly, a YouTuber got in trouble for um, ac for accidentally being live on on like YouTube stream, accidentally jerking it on the air. <laughs> Now that's a video I hope I never make. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, no. Okay. Sorry, sorry, things... I got, sorry for cutting you off. Did you have more to say that, about that? Well, actually, that this is a sort of a common theme. Theme. A lot of things I I try would wouldn't try to make it a very spiteful sort of fueled video. Spite fueled because spite doesn't lead to anything like. You won't see me trying to make, um, well, hopefully not trying to make, if I've done one in the past, sorry, um, angry reviews, because quite frankly, I think that shit's old now. Yep. Um, um, very other spiteful things, like you won't see me reviewing drugs on my channel, <laughs> well, you won't see me um, sleeping with women, then reviewing how my experience was with a woman was, because <laughs> that's no way to treat a lady. <laughs> 
<laughs> okay. Yeah, so, you know, general stuff like that. But surprisingly, um, some of the ideas that... Wait. Some of the ideas that I had come up with my... That I had come up before, unless that's another set... Another idea for this later ep- later part of this episode, isn't it? Ideas that we wanted to make but we couldn't. Is that on the list? Yeah, we we can talk about that a little bit. But uh, what about Dorupka? Do you have okay. videos videos you never make? Something you want to say say to that? Dorupka? Apparently, he's willing to make it. No, I, I, I was I was I was muted. Oh yeah. Uh, sorry. Anyway, okay. sorry. Uh, there's there's the obvious one, like Aqualong said, like Born and shit. But <laughs> I would never do any kind of drama videos, really. Um, uh, and because like I don't like to steer the pot. The closest I get to stuff is on the Beast Cast. Uh, when that's when I when I like rant and stuff because usually there's not that many people listen to it, so I'm more comfortable. And and also like. I'm pretty nice. I will never call out names. I will never call shit talk, uh, especially on a video. Um, I will, I will never do. I, I hate prank videos. I can't stand <laughs> them. I think they're. I think oh, they're yeah. dumb. Yeah. Uh, also, not. I. I, I don't want to do like political or religious based uh, topics. Like I want to stay strictly to. Yeah. Fluffy kind of nerdy kind of shit and. Uh, <laughs> um. Because there's a lot of people who like they 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 gain a lot of subs through this kind of topic, but like I, I just am not interested in engaging in this kind of uh, yeah. thing. Um, um, yeah, and I, I, yeah, like like rant videos. Like I'm not quite sure. Um, it depends on the topic. Um, I have ranted like on the Beast Cast, especially about the Nolan uh, movies and shit. So I. And but usually I keep the most stuff like as, as Kaiser said for like Skype conversations or whatever. So. Yeah, the, the one thing about the Nolan video about the Nolan Batman video that has actually survived is in the top ten uh, or not in the, the in the tenth anniversary video. I actually did say one little clip of it that I thought was really funny, and I decided just for posterity's sake I'll put it in there, even though nobody can find the <laughs> video anymore. <laughs> That's a shame because I really enjoyed that video. Yeah. I, I did see that one too because that was interesting me because you know me with the whole Nolan thing so that was just remember yeah, was a, good, I'm, a lot. A lot I'm of sad people, that it's not there yeah. anymore. Just yeah. remember, a lot of people can take t- things too seriously. Oh yeah, it this this has nothing to do with videos, but I just recently I only just recently discovered this option for my WordPress, and I finally after several years I finally. Close the comment section down on my uh, 10 historical mistakes in the movie Braveheart uh, blog because that's my most read. That's the most read uh, blog on my on my blog, uh, and it keep it gets constant comments. Like the comment section was ridiculous. It was like uh, I'm not even exaggerating when I say it's like 10 times longer than the article that I was that I'd written. So it's like and people seem to completely like miss the point, which was not to shit on the movie. I was just pointing out all the you know the things that they got obviously wrong in the movie, and it was supposed to be. Up- oh, there's there's a lot of them. <laughs> yes, yeah, so mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, and it's it's just like just, that car just, in the just, background, just like a fun little read. And too many people just you know thought I was crapping on the movie or something, and <laughs> like it's just like ah oh, fuck it, I, I'm I'm, I'm, I'm done. Really, this. you get people you get people defending that there's a car in the background of one of the battles in Braveheart. I've watched that movie several times. I've yeah. never seen the car, but I maybe I've not been looking close enough. <laughs> It's a long. Maybe movie. Was a- it's a it's a very long movie though, so that might be another. Okay, you see, th- this is this this is the problem with the internet in general. I think we can all agree on. Even if you're being critical, you can. The thing is, people don't understand you can be critical about something, and uh, where you still enjoy it, you know, where you point out flaws. Because the thing is, everything pretty much has flaws, and there's a lot of like internet people who like say that oh you hate you hate on it. It's it's very vitriolic. It's very black and white. If you don't like gush over something forever, yeah. then and then you got of course people like oh you like this. This is how it shit it is. It's like it's 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 just a never ending like. There's some people they just want to be negative, you know. Yeah. And, uh, and that's, a, that, that's the thing. I, I can understand why you would. Yeah. The, yeah. It was just a, it's just another weight off my mind to get rid of. But that's the thing. Like it's it's my most read blog. It gets at least a thousand people read it every month. Uh, what I notice a spike whenever it's on TV somewhere in the world. There's a spike in the amount of people that go read it, uh, and you know it's my most liked and shared uh, blog. So you know uh, that's another thing is like people clearly like it. So I've never had the heart to take it down. So <laughs> so 
that's the thing. And I, I I put a lot of effort into it too. So it's like that's another thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, but uh, get, getting back to the topic, which is videos you'd never make. And yeah, I I, I think I would agree with a lot of the things you said, uh, Dorovka, on that. Like especially this is the thing that's been kind of a thorn on my side for many years. Is like people um, people make videos on YouTube complaining about YouTube. And again, of course, this comes from the. It usually comes from the people who make a living, who try to make a living off of YouTube. And I understand that they have a concern about that. But when it's like every, it's just like normal us, users who don't like. It's not as much of a problem anymore, I think. But it used to be like when every three months, when when YouTube would change something, you'd get like, <laughs> you'd get just like hordes of people complaining about it. And then give it two or three weeks, nobody would remember what they were angry about anymore. <laughs> <laughs> so it's uh, like, I, I think that, as, as you said, there's, oh, sorry, finish it. Yeah. Yeah, no, that, that's exactly what you're saying, Dorovka. Is like the that's the, that's the internet for you. Like everybody has to find a re thing to complain about, and especially like, but with YouTube, I find it extremely silly because, like, yes, you know, we yes, you have this free platform where you can post pretty much anything you want. Uh, you don't have to pay anything for it, and yes. Yes, it's 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 totally appropriate for you to be fucking complaining about like ads ads in the video uh, videos and things like that. It's like let's uh, come up, come the fuck on already. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, it it gets ridiculous and especially yeah that drama thing. Like yes, I I I try to stay as far away from that as possible. Like that's that is that is so that that's just completely ridiculous. That whole thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's pretty yeah. immature as well. It's like, come on, how old are some of these people? And they're acting like they're in grade school. It's like, seriously. Yeah. yeah. That's what that's what talking to friends in private Skype Skype things for is to bitch about. Save it for them. Yeah. Actually, we kind of jumped over this topic. I completely. Uh, yeah. I, I kind of would have wanted to have gotten Ken's uh, take on it too. Was I, there were, well, it was the topics of videos you'd never make, but also videos that you've never done before, but you would love to do. Is there something that... Ooh, exactly. Yeah. Um, yes. One of the things that I actually wanted to do, but it's probably not going to happen, is I wanted to do a Let's Play of like an 18 plus game and upload it onto RedTube or something like that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Is that... Another thing I'd, I'd like to do is... um, Actually, I can't really think of anything. It's like... Near three o'clock in the morning. <laughs> oh, yeah, I, I get it. I get it. It's getting late, but oh no, um, I'd like to do more interviews on my channel and uh, more like panel discussions. Yeah, yeah, that would be cool. Yeah, all right. And uh, Dorupka, what about you? Anything you haven't done before but you would love to do? Uh, as a um, okay. What what I would like to do, like things um of the nature, like um, I I definitely want to do a top ten video like I, I know you've done a lot and I always enjoyed those and I think uh, there's a couple of top tens that I actually wrote down ideas like top tens and I, st I tried to actually I did record them but it was just like me talking and then I wanted to add stuff but I never was satisfied with it you know so like a top 10 uh, definitely video um, what else oh yeah I want to do, and that's something I, I will do eventually. Um, is the animated series I've talked about? That's but oh, yeah. that's like a lot of work, and and uh, yes. as I said, I, I needed a break, but it's it's that would be one of my things I'd love to do. And uh, like I would like to do, like I know that one of the things that I kind of hate, but I also kind of enjoy. It's kind of weird, but when reviewers they have like little storylines, you know, like <laughs> I'm kind of interested in in doing something like that. You know, it would be more involved, but like I'm, I'm kind of thinking of how to do it without like being invasive. Like I don't know if I want to. I, I, I put little hints in the review, but like it doesn't make sense until I like make something more like like I, I, I had an idea and I still want to do it, um, but I don't know. Like just maybe at the very end of a review, just little short things. But I don't know if that's like already done to death and if this is, like tacky. Well, I mean, but I wasn't sure. I mean, it can yeah. be done, it can be done well, I think, and if you could pull it off, sure. The pro I think the bigger problem with that is that you'd have to come out with the videos like fairly close to each other, so that people mm. remember yeah. that there actually is a storyline going on. <laughs> well, well, yeah. that's that's the problem. I, I I dropped like little hints in the Lionheart and in the Franco review, um, but that was like like 
I, the way how I, I would have to do it is that I have to do then a ve weekly video at least um, to, for people to, to get yep. it. And yep. that's something I still want to plan. But, or, yeah. or you can make a storyline where you can be a character called ReviewBot, where you're a robot, but you're only turned on when you not in the sexual way. You, you <laughs> only get turned you only get turned on when it's time for review, which sort of leaves the gaps for um you know for when you can do it. But if you're one of those characters that if you haven't done a review in a long time, like one of the things you can add on is like dust to the um review bot costume, like just very small yeah. things like that. All right, it's not a bad idea. Like the thing is that it's mostly because me and Kaiser. Uh, that's the other thing we wanted to do something like Tim and Eric Awesome Show, and that's <laughs> something I'd like to do. So I I got tons of ideas, but it's like actually planning them out and doing them. That's of course always the thing. I actually figured a way how we can actually make it look like we're in the same room. Yeah, yeah we'll, we'll we'll figure that out. <laughs> um, but yeah, like basically top tens, uh, the animated series, and uh, like possibly a storyline of some sort. Yeah. So yeah. And uh, last last one that I want to kind of finish off, and we'll maybe finish off this discussion part for me. Like one one of the things is that, uh, and I don't, I don't want to say this is never going to happen, but like if at some point I could like uh, muster the resources to do this, um, it would be kind of cool to just do a live action thing with one of you guys. Uh, you know, either you Kaiser, you Dorobka, or Ken, or any of our number of other international friends. But that's, of course, that's... Uh, that sounds like a really good name for a superhero team. I, the Amazing International Super Friends Hour. <laughs> uh, dude, yeah, that would be great. Um, I actually thought about, because I have a couple of, like, I have at least another person that I know in Finland, but I was always, like, anyway interested in coming to Finland. If I ever do, I, I tell you. Maybe All we right. can do some videos together. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's exactly, like, it would be kind of cool to do the live-action uh, version of this the interaction of it because it's it's kind of, it, it, it would be it would be just kind of a cool experience honestly uh, and and same with Kaiser of course but just Finland right now for me is more realistic but oh yeah Australia one of is one of these days Kaiser I'm gonna come <laughs> and and uh, shit sh shit out of you so yes. gotta get, gotta get working on that mutating mutagen goo that will give me the teleportation powers, then it'll not be an obstacle. <laughs> that, that's a good idea. That's a good All plan. Right. Okay, but I think I think that about wraps it up for the main talk uh, conversation part of the uh, podcast. And uh, when we come back, we'll answer some questions from the listeners. So see you then. And welcome back to the final part of this White uh, Devil podcast, and this is the part where we answer questions, answer questions from the listeners. Uh, and the first questions come from Loco Laranja, aka T McBee. So, uh, and she has three questions for us. Okay, um, and her first question is: Who is your favorite cartoon pet? I.e., Pluto, Mickey and Friends, Gary, SpongeBob SquarePants, etc. Favorite cartoon pets? I know. I think I know mine. Well, what about Kaiser? Do you have a favorite cartoon pet? Well, the first one's coming off my mind is Spunky from Rocco's Modern Life. <laughs> Sp uh, I, I never watched Rocky's Modern Life, so. Rocco's, not Rocky's. Yes. <laughs> like I said, I never watched it. <laughs> <laughs> you need to watch it. It's about a little Australian wallaby living life in 1990s America. All right. It's pretty sweet. Yeah. You get away with a lot of like dirty jokes, but yeah, that's great. And what, what's his pet? What's his pet? It, it's just a dog named Spunky. Ah, okay. All right. What about Dorupka? Uh, that's easy. Snoopy. Snoopy. Ah, Snoopy's a good pick. Uh, what, yeah. what, do you, what, what about Snoopy? Just the fact that he writes uh, or... Well, he's just like... like I like Garfield, too, but I think Snoopy... Snoopy is just like... I always like Snoopy. I don't know. I, I just always thought... He's cool, you know, he's like, he he knows what's going on, what's up, mm -hmm. but, like, he can't ever make a Charlie Brown understand, but he always sticks with Charlie Brown. Like, he doesn't, like, abandon him, you know, because he is his best friend. However, like, uh, like, like, he usually does all the things better than him. Like, I, I don't know, it's like, like, he lives in his own world kind of thing, where, where yeah. people just think he's a dog, but then he goes, like, and... and 
there's the cat, you know, and he sits on the on the thing and he imagines that he's a plane fighter and everything. Mm-hmm. So yeah, it's it's like stuff like that that I enjoy. And it's actually I, I don't like I I did want to see the the CGI movie, but for some reason I just kind of missed it. But I'll watch it on DVD. Yeah, or something. I'll watch All right, it too. Nice. Just kind of, oh, sorry, I've got two more pets that I like from cartoons. Okay. Sure, go ahead. One is one is Luna from Sailor Moon. Which is oh, yeah, the talking the cat, yeah. The cat, yeah. And the other one is Mr. Takahichi from Azumanga Dyer. Mr. Takahichi. Oh my god. Yeah. I I for, I forgot one. Yep. Scooby. From Scooby. Sco- Scooby Doo. What about Garfield? <laughs> yeah, uh, Garfield? Garfield is great too. But yeah, yeah. Scooby Doo Scooby Doo is like fucking Yeah, Scooby is the iconic cowardly animal uh, Oh my god. Speaking but, of which... Oh my god, no, no. Forget Scooby. You know who? Mut- uh, Mutley. That's the Mutley. Oh, Mutley. <laughs> like, uh, fucking Mutley. Yeah. I cannot even do the fucking throat cancer laugh, but it's fucking amazing. <laughs> like, Mutley. That guy's pretty close. Like... <laughs> yeah. Sound more like a choking dude. Mut- Mutley and Dick yeah. Dastardly. <laughs> what a great villain name. Seriously, his name is... His name is Dick. I mean... Yeah. And... <laughs> Anyway, Richard, dastardly. <laughs> My friends call me Dick. <laughs> okay. But, uh, so yeah, and mine, mine's no mystery probably to anybody. It's Cringer, obviously, from He Man and the Masters of the Universe. Mm-hmm. Talking about oh yeah, Cr- Cr- Cringer is great. Yeah, I mean I like Battle yeah. Cat too, but like it, it, there's only ever been one pet character that I think I've ever put on. Oh. Well, that's not true. That's not true. I put I put on. Uh, Made, I've made some character top list, top character lists before, and I do, do think I did put. I think put I put Car- Garfield and Odie collectively on the uh, this old top ten cartoon duos list. But like as an individual, Cringer is kind of probably like, like my favorite one. Uh, yeah. What about, about e- <laughs> what about Evil Lynn, Skeletor's pet? No, that's not. No, nice. he's got. <laughs> uh, she might be a pet, but she'll never oh, he's be got pet. <laughs> he's, he's got he got he's got Panthor, so. Yeah, but well, Panthor. A- anyway, um. Yeah, I, I well, Evelyn gets very friendly with Panthor too in a couple of episodes. I've seen her pet pet her pet. Yeah. Him. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, well, one thing I, w- I wanted to point out, um, just one more thing, because you you mentioned Cringer, and I have to mention that. Yep. It's like because the same filmation cartoons, you got to mention 4040 from Brave Star. And uh, I, I I guess for, I forgot the gorilla from the Let's Go Ghostbusters thing. <laughs> but I mean, he's like more, he's more of a like, like, you know, like a teammate. But 4040 uh, from Brave Star, because I was always a big Brave Star fan. So, Ooh, yeah. yeah. It, you know, the it, horse it, that, it, change, it, yeah, that it, changes it, into it. Yeah, and even Cringer's kind of on the fringes of whether or not you would really consider him a pet because he's kind of like an active part of everything that's going on. But then again, it's so mm-hmm. snoopy. So, yeah, I guess, you know, pet is a t- it's just a title, basically. for yep. Another good one, Gargamel's cat. I mean, Az- Azrael. Yeah, Azrael. Yeah. <laughs> Az- Azrael's named great the, because... Named after the angel of death, no less. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. Okay, the thing about exactly yeah, the thing about Azrael is that whenever uh, uh, Gargamel fails, like he he's such a bastard. He's even a bigger bastard than Gar- Gargamel because even when Gargamel fails, Azrael just usually laughs him out. <laughs> you know, like he, he, because he's just a, such a typical stereotypical evil cat kind of thing. So yeah. By the way, about Gargamel, same voice actor as Dick Dastardly. Yeah. Okay. Oh yeah, that, that makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, n- next question. Uh, number two from T. McB is, uh, what's the best and worst visual editing you've seen in a movie? I.e., I simply hate unnecessary fast edits that looks like a long movie trailer, like you see in the first Twilight movie. <laughs> Ooh, the Evil example. Dead. Hmm. The Evil Dead movie has some fantastic visual editing. Has some very spectacular visual editing. Yeah. Okay, but Sam Raimi films in general mm. have great editing. All right, but what about bad editing? Uh, the Transformers movies. Um, oh, I like sometimes I don't I don't know what the hell is going on because there's so many like explosions and it's not even necessarily the editing. It's just like because there's so much shit going on, but the editing is pretty bad too. Yeah. Um, I'm getting terrible with editing. Like, I don't like, really notice it unless it's really bad. So it's kind of 
Well, um, it, there's it's, probably a t- ton of bad films that I've seen where I could mention it, but I, I was expecting you to it. say Batman v Superman. Uh, pacing is definitely yeah, a it's, problem. It's more it's more uh, pacing than editing, really, because it's it's a yeah. beautifully shot movie, but it, everything takes yeah, times yeah. longer to happen than it should. Yeah, so that's the thing. There's there's just like there's just whiplash effects and like things like where where uh, it's not as you said technically the movie is actually very good in many ways, but it's it's just a lot of the content where they try to shove in so much stuff. And it's just also how. Anyway, I'll stop because I'll never stop. You know, you know. Actually, now that I think about it, there are two. But it's like the editing. The only time I ever really notice editing being like super good is I, I'm I'm a huge sucker for editing things to music. Where in a movie, where mo- where movie like everything in the scene seems to go perfectly with the soundtrack. And there's two movies, of course. And everybody is gonna say them with me once I once, now that I've said the fact. It's the two movies I really love uh, from two from two really good two of my favorite directors and two like you know I reviewed both movies and talk endlessly about this. Ah, uh, so. the Pee Wee Herman movies. <laughs> <laughs> I never watched Pee Wee Pee Wee Herman growing up. Come on, <laughs> so no the the original Terminator and then the first Resident Evil. So those two are like the best for me because yeah, every. Every fucking scene in those movies is set to music, and it's all and it's it's absolutely perfect for both in both movies. So yeah. Uh, if if you if you want a movie, honestly, to for me like that I can remember where the music syncs up really well with the action. Uh, the first thing that came to mind is the Avengers, and the other thing is like Pulp Fiction, because oh, yeah, the yeah, cool yeah. thing about the Tarantino films yeah, the, the Tarantino... is that where he doesn't actually. Yeah. yeah, he uses already established music that has been there, and he just inserts it in such in such a like. Also, Kill Bill would be great, I'd say. Yeah, I mean, it, I'm thinking about bad editing. It's usually when something. Uh, it's usually when they when you can tell it's a scene that's that kind of originally kind of dragged out, and then they like clearly cut something out of it to make it move faster. Uh, uh, I, I'm trying to think of a specific scene, but it's it's basically like any movie where a character is in one place, something happens, and then they're suddenly like in a completely different location, and they're running off to somewhere. Like I, when I when I kind of find myself asking the question, "Wait, how did you get over there?" Like that kind of mm-hmm. stuff. That that's 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 what uh that's the kind of edits that usually bug me. But I can't think of. I'm trying to think of a good example of that. But I can't. I, I just really can't right now uh, come up well, with one. But I, I, I'm, I've seen that in a lot of movies. Yeah. One really badly edited movie I watched was a movie was like a B grade horror movie called Igor and the Lunatics. It like it's like it starts, sounds like a band. That sounds like a band. <laughs> yeah, that it does. does. <laughs> All right, let me tell you why. It like does the introduction to the movie, which is like fair enough. Then it cuts to like like ten ten years later. One of the guys who was involved in the intro is like, "I feel terrible for what went on. Let me tell you what went on." Then it just plays the intro of the movie again in its entirety. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty bad. Wow. That's yeah. As I um, said, I've seen a lot, lot of bad films in my time and they, where they had bad editing, but I just cannot think of one specific. Beauty and Warrior is another one. Okay, yeah, <laughs> that's a that's a callback to the. Uh, the anime, or was it the anime follow-up cast? <laughs> you talked about that. Yeah, when well, you made fun of me for, for saying, ah, Beauty and Warrior. One or the other, the, whichever one you were happened to be on. Uh, uh, because I'm not sure if you were on both. But uh, anyway, yes, well, I can't really think of one right now off the top of my head, but it was still a very good question. Was still, that was very interesting. And mm-hmm. let's move on to the third very question. Uh, let's move on, move to the third question, which T. McVie has for us, which is, what's your favorite fairy tale story? Hmm. Me and the 100 Beautiful Princesses. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> I don't know. It's, it's kind of funny because I think I'm of that uh, of that age where a lot of fairy tales got introduced to me, like through the Disney movies. So it's kind of like, it's really weird for me. because The first thing when I start to think about like a fairy story, I start to think about the Disney version first. And then if I have heard what the original is, I can tell you which one I really hate it. One that I'm not a big fan of is Hansel and Gretel. And it's for one reason only. Uh, it's because of, well, um, 
Hansel and Gretel. That's the English name. What's it called in German? Is it just? Is it just? Is it just? Uh, 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 yeah. Um, the Hansel and Gretel. Uh, Hansel and, and uh, Hansel and Gretel, or something like that. Yeah, yeah. So it's just changing. Hans, Hans, Hanschen. Like I, and it's been a, it's been a long time. But I actually grew up with the stories being read to me, like before mm. I actually seen the, the old golden like, books. I, yeah. My 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 mom ha- has bought me a bunch of like like they, she would read to me and my brother and my dad would too and I would even read back to them like that was a thing we did when when I was very little mm-hmm. and uh, like we had multiple really nice fairy tale books so it was I I think probably my fav my f- I, I I don't even know like uh, like is it like but it cannot be a myth based thing like like Greek well, myth, sure, so sure it can be fairy sure, tales sure it can. Why, why not. <laughs> Well, I I was like uh, well Robin Hood, but it's not a fairy tale, and I liked. Um, well, that's close enough. <laughs> I, I think I, I think if we, now if we're talking specific fairy tale, I, I think I liked uh, Little Red Riding Hood a lot as a kid, and I liked also you know the, the classics basically like uh, um, Beauty and the Beast. Um, there was answer, also some of the Ace, Aesop's fables that were cool. Mm-hmm. My answer um, is a simple one. It's Jack and the Beanstalk. Oh, nice. Oh, yeah, that is a great okay. one. I couldn't okay. think, but that is one of them. I agree. Yeah. Uh, the, 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 but to get back to Hansel and Gretel, you know, with, fin- with Finnish, we've obviously, we have all our own names for these classic fairy tales, like uh, uh, Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. Uh, Snow White, for instance, uh, the Finnish word is Lumiki, which is going to lead on from the Finnish word for snow, which is Lumi. And then uh, Sleeping Beauty is Princess Sarusunen. Uh, and Rusunen, which is a lead on from Rusu, which is Rose, so it's kind of Rose Princess, which is what we call it. Inse- mm-hmm. Instead of Sleeping Beauty, because that doesn't translate well into Finnish, it sounds kind of awkward. And so the same is with Hansel and Gretel, uh, which in Finnish is Hannu ja Kerttu. So my, I, have, I share the name with the Finnish version uh, of Hansel. So I, I was never a big fan of that. <laughs> I know and Gretel. Hmm, uh, sounds like uh, a good uh, for a podcast. Gertu is the Gretel. Okay, wait, 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 wait. Okay, I gotta say this. I'm imagining uh, like Hanu as 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 Hansel and and Kaiser as Gretel. <laughs> I'm the witch or something. You know? <laughs> <laughs> what are you, the witch? <laughs> <laughs> I always liked Wizard of Oz. I know it's not like a classic fairy tale, but I would consider uh, I would consider it a fa- fairy tale. I was, it I was about it to didn't, say, it didn't specify yeah. classic fairy tale. So I don't know. Okay, I, I, like, I wasn't I wasn't read a lot of fairy tales as a kid that much, really. So it's it's I'm a little I'm a little I'm a little torn about this. Like you were talking about classic fairy tales, and like you know, the, like I said, the first thing that comes to mind is the Disney version. If I'm thinking about the you know the Disney movies that are Based on classic fairy tales, and my favorite has always been Beauty and the Beast. So, but I, the story version of that, the actual original story version of that, well, it's not that different. It's it's pretty close, but it's yeah, it's kind of weird. I don't have like a straight answer for this, so yeah, that's what I'm. That's why I'm avoiding yeah. <laughs> I'm answering it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. But th- uh, thanks for those questions, Steve McBee. That was still that was still that was really good. Hmm. All right, and uh, our next question comes from um, Boobop1987, and she writes, Hey there, I got a question for you. After all, the Captain America 3, the Civil War, is coming out in theaters. Uh, I would like to know which side are you on, Team Captain America or Team Iron Man? Captain America, because he represents freedom. Cap- Captain America all the way. Like, I- I've seen the film, and it was amazing. And it was such a nice palate cleanser after, after Batman v Superman. Again, there were some things I liked about this film, but if you compare it to which is Ca- Captain America: Civil War, which is a similar storyline, much better. It was amazing, and yeah, Team Cap all the way. All right. Okay. Yes. And uh, as I mentioned before, Boobop 1987, uh, she has her own YouTube channel as well, and uh, she makes her own movie reviews as well. So, uh, yeah. Okay. Thanks for that question, Boobop. And let's move on. What was your answer, Hanu? <laughs> I didn't see. Captain yeah, what America. are you? I didn't see Captain America three, so I can't answer. Okay, so you, you uh, should check it out, man. I think you'd enjoy I didn't, it. I didn't. I didn't see it either. I read the comics. <laughs> nice, nice. Nice. So you had an out. Uh, <laughs> okay, but uh, the next question. Let's move on. Uh, from the Itch Network. Huh. Interesting. Okay. Itchy and scratchy show. Uh, okay, uh, 
how long and the edge network asks how long would you guys say it takes to make a video on average you can break it up by type of video if you have to um, okay uh, well, it takes it can take um, between minutes to hours just to capture game footage it can take it takes about two to um, seven hours for me to edit a video then it takes another two hours to upload it so uh, all in all you've got numbers <laughs> For me, on average, if we're talking review videos, like it, it will take uh, about, for me, about three to five days, de uh, depending on the pace and at which, because uh, when I say that's when it's done, like, I, of course, I'm not doing it. I'm not making it for 24 hours, for 24 hours, for three to five days, obviously, but that's how, that's about a, it, it takes about a week for me to do something, and I, I, I like that window of time for me is, is good, like that. And if it's a really ambitious, like then I'll I'll take my time with it. Like I have I have given myself like a couple of weeks worth of time to do something. If it, if it's a, if it's like a really big top ten video or something that takes a lot of time just to get like the individual elements of it together. And then uh, then for let's plays, uh, it's you know the combined time is like we usually do a couple of hours worth of gameplay per session. Sometimes a bit longer depending on what we're doing. And then, of course, you have to then watch the video again as you're editing it and, you know, looking for, you know, any, any places to put in a rim shot or a, a sad trumpet. Or in case, <laughs> or in case the, music's, uh, the music's edited too loud and drowns out your voice. Yeah, that's another thing is like, well, it depends on the problem. The thing is with we, when we do the PC, like we're doing the Broken Sword one, we actually, I, actually have, I actually have to check the audio levels before we start uh, recording because the way we record it uh, records the video and audio simultaneously. So if the audio is fucked up, then there were there's not a whole lot we can do about it. But it, it, with the console let's plays, we, I do actually have a little bit more control over it because the audio and video are being recorded separately. But that's a different thing uh, altogether. What about Drobka? How long does it take for you to <laughs> make a video? Um, it depends on again, as it, pretty much the same answer. So it depends on how involved it is. If it's a review. Um, it can take anywhere. Like, if I really am on my shit and everything, and I have played the game, and I have all the footage already collected, like, I would say it can take, like, mm, like multiple hours, obviously. Like, it's... I, did, I never actually measured the time. I, it can take... Like, it depends on how much uh, out, how much hours of the day I, 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 I uh, focus on that. So I would yeah. say, like... I'd say, like... Um, six to like 12 hours or maybe more depending on if I do if I put in any kind of animated sections or like uh, other extra things more art related elements into it like it really just depends um, yeah. so like I, I can't really answer that like 100% yeah yeah it's, but it's, it's, it is a hard if it's a, if it's a, if it's I don't. I don't think any of us really think yeah. about the time we invest into the video overall. Yeah. That's just kind. Of I would have to actually measure. It. Yeah. Yeah, it, it, I would have to measure the time. Yeah, and there's some days when I love when I just like. There are some times when I just start editing the video, and before I know it, I'm fucking done, and it's like, holy shit, where where did the, it's already there? And then there's sometimes like I can do a little bit of it at a time, and then I'm like, ugh, I gotta do something else, and it's then it'll like drag out. But the thing, <laughs> the thing is, the ten, the the important part is like I don't like leaving a video to stew around for too long because that, that that's most of the videos that never actually like made it to the finish line is videos that that I spend like months uh like a month uh just kind of doing bits and pieces of it a little bit at a time like no like that, that that that's never the way to go for me like I have to actually like when I do work on it I do have to get like a good chunk of it like if I if it's like I'll do the script now I will do the voiceover now I will do the video capture if not all of it, then at least most of it, like uh, at least anywhere from 70 to 90 percent of it now. So and then I will pick up the little things that I still need later on. But like it's 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 more like that yeah. me, for me. I can't do it like, oh, I'll work on it a little bit every day for like uh, three weeks. Like then then it's then it's basically gone. The video is never getting made. That's <laughs> that's how it is with me. <laughs> I I can feel you. There's just some videos like I, I I have this kind of thing where I gotta complete. I have some videos that I started and then I just kind of scrapped them uh, because I don't like the how how it came out. But um, 
I mean, there's some videos that I just I just have to like finish and uh, and uh, like basic let's plays. Let's plays I do let's plays because they're they're easier to do. Although nowadays I I put in more elements, like I put in like little clips and jokes and things like that, little effects. So then now they take also a bit longer, depending on how much work I put in. Um, usually let's plays take much faster to make because usually if I just do it the old way, it's just I slap up the footage pretty much in the template that I've set up, render it, and then that's it. But oh, nowadays I, I, I add in a, a couple of like pictures or little little gifs and little animations. Oh, things. Sometimes I have to edit stuff out of the... Um bottom of the corners because sometimes I record the games with the Steam overlay still on, so it could pop up your friend is playing this, friend is playing that, but I mainly just sense that when it's family that pops up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because this is my time, not their time, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Another thing uh, I, I wanted to ask you, do you know the very first cartoon that I put on YouTube was the... Uh, the first Metal Poop shit it was the Metal Poop shit one, which was my Metal Gear. I, or, I, I watched it. Yeah, yeah, I watched it. You know, I you know how long it took me to make video. that, actually? Do you how wanna, long? Want to take a guess? Do you want to take a guess? Over 9,000 uh, minutes. Maybe like a day or something? Yes, it, it took me exactly one day. I did the voiceover in the morning. I drew all the animation things in the afternoon, animated in the afternoon, and by the evening I had uploaded it. And I did metal poop shit the ne- to the next day. <laughs> so I'm kind of yeah. I'm kind of like that with I'm still kind of like that with videos. Like I, I I felt so good about myself for having done that that I immediately started thinking, oh man, I gotta make another one of these. And it's kind of it still kind of happens with that. Like even with my review videos, like if I do uh, like a v- movie review, like the postal one I did, and I felt like man, I, this came out pretty good. Like I gotta do another uh, one immediately I, after that. Yeah, oh, I felt yeah. like that back in 2005 during my high school days when I was making um. Freddy animations with um Windows Movie Maker. <laughs> yeah, I gotta find uh, a way to re-upload those, but I don't reckon anyone's gonna like them. Okay, but well, I think we answered Itch Network's question. Thank you very much. And uh, then we have one more question from Chin Pan Feather, and he asks, "All right, get all right, kids. I got a question. What is the tallest building in the world?" <laughs> My dick. <laughs> 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 okay then. <laughs> uh, I, I think there was this one building, the steel tower thing in the uh, Malaysia. Oh, oh, or, Malaysia. Or, okay, okay. Uh, it might yeah, be that one. Yeah, I'm thinking of. I'm thinking that there's a this one in the Middle East, but you might actually now that you said the Malaysia one, I think that might actually be it. So I don't know. Because that changes all the time. So because I mean it used to be way way back in the like 50 it was the Empire State Building. No, nope, actually but it's like it has changed. Yeah, actually I was right. Yeah. I just I just got to Wikipedia and the first thing it shows is uh the Burj the Burj, I don't know how to pronounce this, but Burj Khalifa in Dubai. So yeah, that was the one I was thinking of. But yeah, yeah the, I know the Malaysian Yeah, one, yeah, yeah oh yeah, that one. Yeah. But the Burj Khalifa, yeah, that one is huge. That one is 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 Huge. Yeah, yeah. Oh. That's what he she said. <laughs> no, but actually, you're right. You're right about the Malaysia one. It's on here. It's it, it just barely misses the top ten. It's the Petronas Tower. It, well, yeah. It it used to be at one point, but then yeah. they, they made this new one, and they like uh, you know. Yeah. It's, it's well, kind it's, of like it was a, built in ninety eight, and I think it took the record when the two towers fell. So ugh, okay. <laughs> Don't want, to, um, don't want to think about that then. <clears throat> I'm waiting yeah, for the that's, that's, I'm waiting for the day when someone builds the world's largest roller coaster in like the size of those buildings. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And and that's all the questions we have from the viewers and everything. Uh, all right, and I guess that wraps up this White Devil podcast. I had a lot of fun, and it's it's a shame Ken had to bow out, but he was here for the most of it. Most of it, so it was still it was still nice having him on here. And, of course, it was lovely having Kaiser and Dorupka here as well, again. Oh, thank you very much. It was an honor being here. I always enjoy being here. Oh, yeah. And I think Kaiser... Reigning uh, match game champion. (laughs) Rubbing it in. (laughs) Oh, boy. And I think Kaiser... I I didn't even know about it until you, like, posted it in the poll poll site. (laughs) I was like, it's kind of weird, but cool. 
Oh yeah, because I, I keep I keep records of all of these all of these things, and also like who's been on, how many who which people and how many times they've been on the podcast and everything. And that is that is still yeah. like, you you are still the statistical oddity, Doravka. You are the sing, only yeah. solo guest ever in the history, and and you are probably going to be for the rest of time because of course now we have the co-host thing going. Look out, Conan! Look out, Conan the Barbarian! We've got Doravka the chart topper here. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so, any any interesting last words before we end the podcast? I'm going to um, bed, guys. Catch you later. <laughs> um, yeah. No, nothing. Keep on, keep on gaming. Keep on doing fellow beasts what you do. So, yeah. And, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Good. And I uh, and as for me, this is Hunter the Hunter Mackinen signing off. Uh, have a good one, and see you on the next one. Bye. Bye.